Love and Gogi is wrong. I don't want to be right. What would Socrates say to that? It tickles my face. Uh, okay. Goosies. Okay. I don't have hair. Oof. You got Marcos. That's not. No, that's not. Wait. <laughs> yeah, that's you. Right. You do got me. Get over here, Marcos. Hey. Let me look I don't want it! Talk with Leroy, ready to deploy. Had to hit it with a little journalism, but that was a decoy. Better have about me, boy. Okay, Leroy ain't told me. Ultimate show, man. Still some of the with a show, man. Till then, his hat won't open. Sometimes go taste like a snowman. No proof, I'm a lie about a motor. No proof, like I always wanted him. I never tried him, and if I did, I never ever tried him. You don't know what? What is a star? Like under the city, the driver's side floor. Goose like a large, so many more. Ten in the morning, never a bar. Hey, ten in the morning, two to the P. Nothing to you, but it's something to me. Handsome as ever. Cute as can be, you can watch the YouTube review for free. This one time for the Twitch. This one time for the text. This one time for the phone line. Whole time, wonder what they gonna do next. You know, I, I just wish you guys would stop the quibbling. How to do, everybody? Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Dude, where's your vice shirt? It's Friday. What are you doing? You... Oh, oh, I had to run the really school this morning. This morning. You had to get no. run, run to what? To school. Oh, uh, so all right, what do they have a dress code? I'll, I'll, the wine yeah. shirts. <laughs> I mean, I can't go up in there looking like a clown. What? Why not? I do it all the time. But I do. <laughs> when I go to work after this, they're like, "Hmm, interesting shirt choice today." And I'm like, "Vice shirt Friday," and they have no idea what I'm talking about. The the improv has uh, problems with your dress <laughs> code. <laughs> clown factory, right? <laughs> Who do you got this weekend? Uh, T.J. Miller in uh, Miami. Oh, I haven't seen him do a ton. Wasn't he on Crancis Corner this week? He may have been. He's been he doing a, a lot of, as much media as he possibly can. Yeah, I was like, I noticed when I logged into QAM's uh, YouTube page, I was like, this is a lot of T.J. Miller interviews that are coming up <laughs> on our algorithm. And so yeah. I don't even know if these are new T.J. Miller interviews, but uh, all right. Yeah. Him of uh, Silicon Valley fame. Indeed. He's uh, he's going to be doing some work. I'm also going to be doing a, uh, a hypnotist show on Ooh, Sunday. Uh, Dr. Lenny Moore? Again, no, it's not. There's more than one hypnotist. <laughs> I don't think there is. Not better than Dr. Lenny Moore, former Miami Hurricanes champion. Well, no one, no one is better than Dr. Lenny Moore. Dr. Strange? <laughs> is it a man hypnotist or yeah. a lady hypnotist? No, it is a man. His name, I believe, is Rich Goozy. Ah, and, the uh, Goose Man. He's known specifically for doing some shows in Coconut Grove back when the improv was there. And making people do things they probably normally wouldn't. Yeah, you know, I'm always uh, very interested with this hypnotism. You know, I do think I believe in some level of it. You know, we had Dr. Lenny Moore on hypnotize Zazzle, but I think Zazzle was kind of playing along with it. I don't know how much Damn. I don't know how much uh, was legit or wasn't legit. But I do think that you put a, little, a few cocktails in people and you say, hey, I'm hypnotized. People are about to do some crazy stuff. Yeah, I've seen some wild stuff, and it makes me question it as well. Like, you know, what's real, what's not. So, has anybody ever used that? You know, to get away with crime, I was hypnotized. Oh, I'm surprised. You would think out of all the defenses, what is hypnotism? What is, what are your, uh, what are your responsibilities under hypnotism? You know, mm, do you still get like second degree? Or I don't know. Is it like, it probably depends. I don't think you can get away with murder, but let's just say robbery. Mm. You know, let's make it a little less grim. Oh, wow. On on the other side, this is directly from justice.gov. Witnesses to crimes have been able to recall certain facts from the, from the crime while in a hypnotic state. I've heard about that. Yeah, that's wow. true. People have used uh, mediums before at crime scenes to try and find, like, evidence and things like that. <sighs> mediums? Yeah. You know, like the people who could speak to the spirits, Leroy. I haven't been a medium. No, I know. It comes on, uh, what's her name? Uh, Caputo. With the big hair. Chris Caputo? No, he coaches a hurricane. No. Wow. <laughs> no, there's a, there's, a, there's a medium show, and I bet you can't guess where she's from. Teresa Caputo. Yeah. Hmm. Jersey. Yeah. yeah. The show is Long Island Medium. Oh. All right. Yeah, but she's from go. New Jersey. Makes sense. You think you could take over my brain waves? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know one thing. Mecca, bro. <laughs> um. All right, let's get to this. Our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Yeah. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Um, I don't know if this is new or not. 
I'm assuming it is, but I just logged into X this morning on my work computer and it was the first video I saw the Panthers yesterday. They shut out the Columbus Blue Jackets back to back shutouts for the cats, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Starting yeah. to get right yeah. at the right time. I like that. Starting to get right at the right time. When you need to stop the nonsense, you go with Bob or Stoli, the goalie. Nonsense is going to stop. Okay. And yeah, you got a couple fluffers here to get yourself ready for the season, but Hey, you can only play who you can play just like the heat this weekend. You got to turn the page, get these next couple games, right? But do we have a horny Victor E rat? Whoa. What? What's going on with that? Is that real? I don't know. Well, it, it, it appears to be yeah, real. I, mean, yeah, I just don't know if it's sure. new or not, you know? So if I'm getting uh, duped by old horny Victor E rat, <laughs> I apologize, but I have never seen this video before mm. because I got tagged on this today and I'm like, hmm, I think I'd do that more if I was a mascot, you know? So I'll play you the video here. There appears to be a Victor E. Rat at the game last night and a young lady is in a Panther sweater dancing. Victory Rat asks her to give her a little old spin a rooney. And uh, he seems like he's enjoying the show. Wow, dude. I tell you what, this is definitely not the same guy that got drubbed by that Tampa fan. Oh, you think so? <laughs> this is a different this, guy. This Victory Rat has a little more swag. This to guy's him. got some swag. Like the guy who got thrown into the dumpster. Yeah. Well, I, like I mean, I would too. say, I would say, I mean, Victory Rat could not have known she was going to drop it like it's hot. I mean, he asked her to almost. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if a rat, and, if a person in a rat and, costume and, does ask you to spin around, you know, you're, and, you're just more trusting of mascots. And and and, and, and he is kind of, I mean, he would have been something if he would have just made it rain. Yeah, but, you know, I, he, he was very. Hands uh, crossed, very professional. Very professional, kept professional. His hands professional. And then and then he gets to howl. I do yeah. <laughs> rats gonna rats howl. don't howl. He is howling. I don't know, man. Like, listen, my son uh, really likes Victor E. Rat. I don't know if I'm ready for him to know about hey, check out Victor E. Rat pimping over here. I'm trying to look at like uh names yep. the back of look, the He made sure the people knew where his hands were. J Fig is right. And then hits him with that ow. <laughs> <laughs> It's a horny mascot right there. Yeah, it is horny. I mean, but but wait a minute. Like, there's Literally one no thing one to be a, a horny mascot. It's another thing to drop it like it's hot in front of the mascot. Man. Thing is. Like, I mean, because she could have very easily said, no, we wouldn't even seen this. What was the conversation prior? I they, don't know. They were face to face. I don't know. Any kind of motions. Like, let me get a little 360. Maybe I'll go to this uh, guy's Twitter. I got this from uh, at David954FLA. He uh, is apparently the host of the FLA Cats Hockey Podcast. All right. So after you listen to David Dwork, listen to him. But, uh, yeah, right. I don't know. I tell you what, it's that building, dude. Same thing happened to Kodak Black. <laughs> dude, that build, gets like, going. Dude. Panthers games are a different animal, yeah? <laughs> yeah, they, they must Hockey be. in general is a different animal. But they do the chugging. Yeah. We have Kodak Black, wow. and now we have Kodak Rat. <laughs> Look at this. Hey, you celebrating celebrate fights? Like, oh man. yeah, it's a different building, man. It's and also the same victory rat that got his ass kicked. Can't be the same one. Different guy for sure. Yeah, I don't know. You or maybe he just hate him. No, it's the same guy, dude. No, if if you get your ass whooped by a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, you're fired, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's it. That's where I draw the it's line. Very hard to defend yourself in a rat costume. It was, and I know he was trying to remain professional, but that's none of my business, dude. Out of here. You don't think it's like one of those policies, like if you get beat on as a mascot, you're not supposed to touch anyone because, like, you know how like you'll see these policies at like Apple stores, like, hey, don't stop robbers. Like it's yeah, you know, not that. not worth it. We got insurance, right? Yeah. So, and right. it only costs us three dollars to make that apple. That's more important. Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> If this is new, I'm assuming it is because I've never seen horny Victor E. Rat. But that's how you celebrate a four wait. nothing win, dude. Yeah. That's, that's how you win. celebrate wait, a wait, four nothing win. That's what yeah. I'm talking wait. about. Here's where you know it's no big deal. Look at the people around them. Literally, not one person. They're just like it's like that's Tuesday. Not one. Right? Before. Look, not one I person. Mean. Look, they like give a little look and they go back to the game. Back to the game. So. How bad could it be? 
I'm not saying it's bad. I just never have seen a rat behave <laughs> I mean, like this. More it. people, more people reacted when Victory Rat was getting his ass kicked than Victory Rat getting a lap dance. Well, we don't know how long this uh, ass shaking was going mm. on for this particular Lady Panthers fan. Yes. Which, by the way, has the throwback sweater, so you throwback. know she's a real one. Absolutely. And 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 what did she? What did she go to the game with? I don't know. That's a good. Because I got to tell you, Big Spoon drop it like it's hot. We're gonna have a discussion. Yeah, as I'm in line waiting on her her corn dog, I'll be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> you look at you look at the jumbotron. <laughs> I'm paying twelve dollars for a corn dog right now and he's dropping it on the rack. You, you sit me for a corn dog and 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 like turned into a horn dog. <laughs> Man, that's great. What a night, huh? Again, though, I don't know wait, what, what, what wait, she wants. No, what first, she wait, first, here's a, here's how the conversation went. Hey, you want me to show it to you? Go ahead. Want me to shake it for you? You want me to shake it? Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. You like that, huh? Oh, that's, how the, that's how that conversation went, right? And then he went, oh! Mm. <laughs> Maybe she's also a furry. Oh. Who knows? That's a new thing. Loves the Panthers, loves... Furry mascots. I think that rat has a riz. That's what that is, right? That's a riz rat. That's a riz rat. That's a riz rat. Wow. This is amazing. No, it's, oh, it's pretty man. amazing that this is where we are now on a Friday. Is it? Like, well, if, if Leroy, if you were to open up the internet and this was the first <laughs> thing you saw this morning, where would you start the show? I would have questions. <laughs> yeah. I, haven't even, I haven't even got to the debut of Jimmy Butler on a horse yet. Oh, we yeah. are by the way, we're we're so back. We're so back. Oh, we're back. Hey, wait, oh, wait a minute. We're so so, back. so let me let me look. We're so back. Here, here's here's the problem I have. All right. Jimmy and Bam scored 20. And in the next 24 hours, Jimmy's riding a horse and doing big face coffee. Yeah, that's right. Now, can we get some basketball in there? Well, you got to remember that we know the horse commercial was not shot. It wasn't shot after the loss uh, last night. It's been in the can. Okay, what about Big Face? Let, let, I, I would like some get some big buckets. I'm very surprised by you. I, I mean, I, 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 I figure you're like professional athlete gets to do what he wants on his day off. Oh wait, wait, wait! It's not me. It's not. But but wait, you ain't nobody saying what I'm saying right now. You got to admit though, like the nobody's saying what I'm saying right now. I'm sure there are, but I am. I, you know what? It's strangely when I saw it, it made me happy. It made me. It reminded me why Jimmy's the best. And Heat and Five, we're gonna. We're, we we are so back. You back? We are so back. We'll uh, bring that. We, we'll, can, we'll, we'll can, can we get first of all before you get to Heat and Five? Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to go through Heat and One. Oh, that's okay. That's which formality. is which is more terrifying than Heat and Five? Nah, formality. Okay, uh, we first, we've been saying that all year. First, uh, give us an update from the Masters. Hello, friends. Hello, Brought to friends. us by the Edwin Watts Golf Shops. Get there. All right. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau is a leader. He shot seven under yesterday. Um, and he tees off at um, just before 12 today. Scotty Scheffler, number one in the world. He shot six under. And he is... Um, he tees off at just before two. Now, here's where it gets tricky because some guys have started their second round and some guys have finished their first round. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we had the whole thing with Tiger to Right. So I think he got through 15. Right, right. And he shot, uh, he didn't play so well in the morning. He was moving rather gingerly. Finish he finished minus. at 73. Minus so not minus. terrible. Not terrible. Uh, uh, in other stories, you know, there's, you know, seven under, six under. There's a couple of guys at five under. Max Homer finished at five. Cam Davis is at five under. He started his second round. Um, but we had some whoppers. Uh, let's go down to uh, Brian Harmon, who I thought, you know, he just won the, the, the British Open or the Open Championship. Uh, he shot a 34 in the front and a 47 on the back for a nice 81. Jeez. Right. Uh, I watched, um, he'll be doing the trunk slam. So that's one of my guys that's out. Uh, Jordan Spieth got a nine on a hole. So he's at seven over. He shot 79. 
So he'll be doing a trunk slam. And uh, there's some carnage out there. So, uh, but right now, as of right now, there's only maybe 15 guys, 16 guys that are under par. So Tiger has a good chance of making the cut, but he looked rather gingerly. I think Tiger was ginger. Am I crazy to think I thought he got his DeChambeau on? The dude looks swole as hell. Am I crazy? Uh, looks like he was doing shoulder shrugs all this okay. time. Okay, there's, there's different levels of swole. Okay. For Tiger. No, no, no. But let me tell you what happens. So you have what we call a tool swole. He putting on weight to protect his body, right? Mm-hmm. And then as he goes on in his career, like now, he can con- maintain that strength while getting more tone and slimmer. He looks slimmer, but I bet you his weight is not that far off, right? Then you have Tiger, who came into the league looking thin. Came into the PJ Tour looking thin. Then he started working on the weights and got swole. Then he had to get fit again because, you know, he started getting older. And now that's old man swole. Old he man looks old swole. Man, yeah, he looks old. Like, look at him right now, Marcos. Does, does it's, Tiger old man, not, it's old man swole. Tiger Woods looks like he could barely turn his neck. He's too busy. It's, it's old man swole to where you, can't, you can't do as much cardio because your body is tore up. But you're still doing the stuff that allows you to make those swings. So it's it's old man swole. Looks like he's about to bomb at 500 yards. Are you saying he's not juicing, Leroy? Are you are you no. attempting to? I don't think he's me. juicing. I don't think he's juicing. No. He just looks no. like he he looks like a guy who doesn't do much cardio anymore and just right. gets on the bench and just throws up some right. lbs. Exactly. You know what I'm talking about. Everybody know the old man swole. The mm. old man swole would go in there and do three sets of bench and then leave the gym. This is on Golf Reddit. Not since Barry Bonds have I seen such a swollen head. I don't know, dude. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. I can't rule it out. Let me, let, me ask, let, me ask, let me ask you a question. Looks like Conor McGregor. How is a head supposed to look when you're 48, dude? Like you, nah, it's, uh, I don't know. It, lo- it didn't look like that at 47. Yeah. <laughs> the best shape so, of his life. Yeah. Looked, uh, yeah. You, you didn't notice it yesterday? No, I didn't. He's I didn't got make, a sweater on right now, so he definitely looks a little beefier I, than I, I, really I didn't would. make anything of it, to be honest with you. Interesting. I really didn't. It stood out to me. Mm. Yeah, there you it go. Stood out, stood out to me. And um, Jason Day stepping to the T. Huh? He, Jason Day. I mean, that, that group there is banged up. Jason Day has a bad back. Right? Mm. So, yeah, it's 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 crazy. So, we have a lot of uh, shenanigans to get to here on the show. We, it's, a, it's, a fun, it's a fun loose Friday. We start off with uh, with rats demanding twerking. We go on to our basketball star on horseback. That's next. WQAM.
Ah, welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you, 560 WQM. Happy Friday. Happy Got a big weekend ahead. Got UFC 300 tomorrow. About to watch these weigh-ins. Let's see what we got going on. See who makes weight. It's a very stacked card. I'm going to be very mad if anybody misses weight. Man, I forgot that it was tomorrow. For some reason, I thought it was next week. Oh, man. I can't wait. I'm excited. Wow. All and right. that's good. Remember, we were scared about uh, UFC 300. We thought that it couldn't scared live of the main event. Day. I mean, everybody was making a big deal about the main event. Honestly, what they should have just done to make it less of a headache the entire time was just make it Holloway versus Gaethje. That, I mean, yeah. that's the best fight on the card, bar none. Yeah. But it's third Stack up. Card, it's though. third up from the main event because <laughs> they found it weird to make a BMF title be the main event. Yeah. Um, which is kind of silly if you think about it because Masvidal and... Nate Diaz did it. Like, why would it be such a? Uh, but they wanted. They were Isn't hoping three hundred. Yeah, but who cares? Like, th- it's a great fight. It's they're two of the most popular fighters in the division in the uh, in the sport. You know. Right. Yeah. So they tried. They they just kept trying and trying and trying to find a monster title fight for it, and they settled on the weirdest division of all time, which is the two hundred five division. Very strange. Uh, but still a great fight. I mean, like, it's just not like the most the one with the most fanfare. Jamal Hill versus Alex Pajeda. Who, yeah. of course, uh, we talk about his kid all the time because he's a uh, kid trolled Israel Adesanya and got trolled back. <laughs> he's not in that weight class anymore, though. He moved up. He moved up. Hey, to that might be one of the funniest back and forth. And both people took it. Both people took it, you know, took it well. Right. Izzy's like, oh, oh I'm big petty. <laughs> and petty, take it well. petty, petty towards the seven year old. I mean, hey, pretty good. Taught him a lesson. Never Goes around, comes around. Kid. Taught him, taught him an absolute, uh, taught, taught him an absolute lesson. Um. Anyway, yesterday, the Miami Heat officially returned because Jimmy Butler officially returned on horseback. We're wow. back, Leroy. You yeah. know, everybody's bitching and moaning around these parts. Oh, Jimmy just doesn't care anymore. Jimmy, he doesn't have it in him anymore. Well, let me ask you something, dude. If a guy shoots a commercial on the most glorious horse I've ever seen, what am I to, supposed to do with that? I'm supposed to just say this guy doesn't care. This guy no, who shoots tell you what you do. doesn't care. I'm going to tell you what you do. You, you say, you know what? He's closer to the rim. He won't have to jump as much. I would actually like to see this <laughs> for him to show up to the game via horseback. But uh, Jimmy Butler did a water commercial yesterday. Water? Yep. Yep. He showed up at the uh, for a water his uh, essential. Wow, that's basketball court up on Jimmy Butler. Game of horse. Horse on a horse. Horse on a horse. All right, we'll play horse for the horse. That's heavy stakes. That is heavy. That's stakes. heavy stakes. I tell you good, what, that's Joker, a really nice horse. Joker would never take that deal. No, no way. He no. would never put the risk of his horse. Joker wouldn't lose. <laughs> That's true. Actually, in horse specifically, yeah, I don't think he would. Or anything else. Do you think anybody could get a bucket on Joker in a, in a game of horse? Does that horse kind of look like emo Jimmy? A little bit. <laughs> it's an emo like horse. The bangs in the front. That horse is. That horse is thinking. Hey, don't be shooting the ball like you shot it the last two weeks. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my hydro boost. Hydro boost. Wow. Wow. All right. One hand from One the One handed from the three. Nothing oh, but yeah, net. Right. I'd like to see that shot. I'd love to see that. I'd like to see that shot. Keeps it going. Because, mm-hmm. like, look, Jimmy Butler, you think he was on the horse the whole time, or you think he's, like, on a stunt uh, robo yeah, horse right now? I'm seeing no horse right now, so mm. I won't believe. Oh, oh there's the horse. the horse. You can see the horse. Oh, I can see his ears. Because that's it. That is like we joke all the time. That is a genuine show pony right that, there. That is a horse. That's a house. That horse doesn't look as big now. Oh, he missed one. Yeah, but a horse isn't going to look as big with Jimmy oh, Butler on it. You know one. what I mean? No, but I'm just going by. You know what I'm going by? The people um, standing by and petting a horse. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I wasn't going by Jimmy. 
Oh, uh, he's standing a, on the horse now. It's a pretty big horse, dude. That is a huge. That is a stallion, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh! I didn't know you did a oh, 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 oh. That's a show pony, dude. <laughs> I didn't know. The only the only problem is he would have to do it on the intangible a horse. Well, 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 I mean, I mean, he's right. Yeah, he's right. I I mean, I love. My thing is that we have the complete bizarre fact that he is on a horse playing horse, but they still were like, oh, yeah, well, let's let's let him miss a couple shots, though, for realism. Yeah, yeah, you got to, you know, listen, they got to get tricky. He did one blindfolded. Oh, he needs a sentient. You know, and now he gets his secret Oh, shirt. my God! Wow! What Look at him dunk I on that horse! What am Can I ask a question? Wow! Wow! Can I ask a question? And I know we're just nitpicking here. Yeah. Shouldn't we have given the horse some water? Poor horse. You know, you can lead a horse to water. <laughs> you can't force him to drink horse with a. You can't force. <laughs> can't force him to drink it with electrolytes in it. Can't force a a dunking horse to drink water. No, you can't. I mean, wow. great commercial. This guy's back. Dude. Look at that. Yeah, look, he's having fun. I mean, what, what do we? What, 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 I'm supposed to be mad at this guy? Come on. I didn't. By the way, that, that is. Moment. That's a First great commercial. Thing. This is it. You have to stop that picture right there because yeah, the horse is on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. and Jumping him, from the free throw, dude. Him stopping would be rather difficult. He'd be fine. This this okay. horse has got some. Uh, the horse has got some ability to stop. He has some show pony in him. We we already saw that. Dade South says this is your painted tunnel again. I'm not doing while he coyote. Oh, He's yeah. back. <laughs> he dunked on a horse, dude. Yeah, come on. What more I, I would like him to just dunk or it just get high enough. I'm telling you right now. Okay. This this brings back the mojo that is Jimmy Butler Damn. via horseback. What if he shows up to tonight's game on a horse? He should. Wow. That you know, as a that's that I'm sure that's what the water company wants him to do. Yeah, it's true. But you know what? They couldn't afford the horse for one more day. Oh, I tried that water. Oh. <laughs> Not that good. No. But good for them. Yeah. For sure. you know, great commercials though. Absolutely, you know, Aquafina wow. has terrible water. They've never entertained me like that. True, Dasani's the worst though. Oh, Dasani's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because keep in mind, some of it is just purified water. So all they do is clean the water coming on the faucet. I don't even think they do that with Dasani. That, that's what pur purified water is. I think they marinate their water in nickels. <laughs> <laughs> Anson Daffy says that was Super Bowl caliber. I agree. That was, that was he big, is, it? but you know, it is it is a really great thing. Like, you know, he, this guy, he is hold on, you know damn well that water can't afford no half uh Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what these water for commercials can afford. I have no well, idea. You know what you know what they can afford? Hmm? Uh Miami Hurricanes, uh right after the slap child, the the slam wow or whatever Ooh, that oh you're talking about on the ACC network. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, they, they can afford a couple spots on the ACC. It'll be yeah. the only other spot on the ACC network. Uh, like chopped potatoes, and here's a horse. I don't know. I wonder what their value is. Mm. I mean, look, they paid a lot for Jimmy Butler. They paid a lot for that horse, and that commercial wasn't short. So no, yeah. it was like what was that? A two minute ad? That was that well was, done, though. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. And they had great marketing. I'm sure someone on set released that photo of Jimmy Butler crossing the street with the horse. That was genius. Yeah, for sure. Got all of us talking about it. Is it real? Is it not? And look, what what other reason would you have tried Essentia water? It says it's valued at over a billion dollars. This company. Huh? Well, because they, um, they oh, could, yeah. no, they and no, no, they have a different water. They have that water. Don't they have the water with the the black label on it? Yeah, that's what that is. It's like a spinoff. Oh, this is like their right. sports oh. spinoff. Okay. Yeah. So no, they got they have water. Well, you said they mm. couldn't afford it. You said that they belong no, to the just, ACC I network. Just about it. That's not, that's, you put them I, in the that's, wait, wait, wait. That, that's not their only uh, water. Mm. It is ionized. Well, yeah, Gatorade's, Gatorade's got like 900 Gatorades that they put exactly. out. Exactly. Well, remember Propel? That was cool. But like their ad budget doesn't just come out of like Gatorade gummies. Ooh. Gatorade gummies. Yeah, I've no, seen those never before. Uh, the. The commercial's great, and it makes me happy, and he makes me happy. I, and, every, you know, and everybody, and every, what? 
Jimmy Buckets would make me happy. That's, That's fine, Jimmy, but there were no Jimmy Buckets Jimmy to be no had yesterday. Okay. There were no Jimmy Buckets to be had yesterday. Everybody okay. was sad over the loss, and that makes me feel better. Okay. Okay. Makes me happy. Makes me feel better. Uh, okay. Okay. Did you see Bam at South Beach, though? I don't know. That wouldn't make No, me I saw him on Instagram. It looked like he was playing with his dogs. Oh, that's cool. I'll take you know? that. Dogs make you feel better. A you little know? R&R. But dogs don't care if you're three for 13. They do not. You know? They do show not. Show ponies do. That show pony was paid actor. Though. Oh, it was a great. <laughs> Jump for the free throw. Can we just play, though, like, during the game, game ops? Like, Ooh. I don't know if, like, that water company is with the heat or not, but they should be and and they should just play after jimmy buckets what they should do is they should play the horse doing the trot that's how you get them motivated that's pretty good you know that's it's all happening for us baby look i was i i spent a lonely night last night reflecting after seeing this and i'm like we're gonna be just fine we're gonna be just fine you know what i did last night what watch a little 2020 nba finals some classic performances by jimmy butler all right and i thought two things one that's a long time ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. Because you got to remember, it was a. Uh, you it was to, a. You know, athlete years go quicker. What, what, what are you? What are you? Uh, a fortune teller? Like you got superstitions you believe in now? No, I'm just telling you. Going from 32 to 35 is. is He's never jumped that high. He's fine. He's okay. fine. He's fine. Right. And let me tell you something. You watch those performances. First of all, the fact that he was able to get a couple of games in that game three, with who he was playing with. Wow. Amazing. Then that game five where he's got banned with one arm, mm. you know, amazing. Thirdly, God, there was such an asterisk on that on that series. No Goron, one arm bam, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I'd barely wear that ring if I was LeBron. <laughs> I'd be ashamed of it. You are out of your rabbit. I, I mean, you I would be, be wearing that thing twenty four seven. Ashamed of it. Still counts. I mean, yeah, but it's like Rival said. It's like he said, I'm not going to say what he said because, you know, you're in trouble. You know, the whole, you know, people, big babies about it. Right? It's an asterisk. It's all fine, dude. You know, just get us there. Once we're there, we know what to do. And he's back. Once we get there, we know what to do. That's all that happened. Doesn't matter if we go there by horseback, by tractor, by tank. Hey. Doesn't matter how we, well, don't go there by tank. But it doesn't matter how we get there. I feel like we once went we're to, there, we I know. I feel like there. I feel like we went to a commercial break and resumed uh, programming because you're back. Yeah. Okay. Aren't you happy? <sighs> what does Dade say? What the hell does that mean? Dade South says that commercial is a Tobin pacifier. Jimmy dangling mm. keys in front of a crying baby. I don't like that. I'm a grown man. I can't just enjoy a commercial and feel how I want to feel. You guys are babies. You're stupid.
Who's that, Tobin? That's uh, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, nice. Uh, I don't like what uh, I, I I gotta tell you. I'm very disappointed in our audience. Why? Oh, I'm disappointed in J Fig just sent the the full extended version of Old Nasty Rat. I know. I want to check it out. I haven't had time yet. <laughs> I want to check that out. We will get to uh, if you guys missed it yesterday. We started our show today learning we got a horny mascot on the Panthers. Okay. But uh, apparently there's more footage that we need to uh, to oh, die. Oh, oh, hey, they showed the last little bit of it. Yep. This goes on for quite a minute. And so, it it was a lot more than just him looking back, crossing his hands. Love it. All right, we'll get to that in, uh, in just a bit. Horny E-Rat. Uh, but. You know, I don't like that, you know, people are, are first of all, compare, you know, f- people I consider, you know, participants in this show, you know, o- almost almost Tobin and Leroy family, like RVA Richie and Dade South saying that I'm just being distracted by Jimmy Butler and I'm a baby. That's not fair. OK, because Dade South is sitting here saying like that commercial to you is just Coco Melon. That's all that is. <laughs> and if you guys don't know what that is, it's a show on Netflix. It basically just, you know, distracts your children of, you know cartoonish thing. It's a little past my era, but I've had ne- nephews and nieces who watch it. Yeah. Uh, do you have Coco Melon on the reg, Marcos? Man, not allowed at that. Why? It's too addicting, actually. Really? Yeah, it is too. There's actually a bunch There's of, like a study on it? There, that and Peppa Pig for some reason. They're Peppa just, Pig? I know. They say that Peppa Pig makes your child uh, disrespectful. Really? Apparently Peppa doesn't treat her parents right. So yes, Coco mm. Melon is very addictive, completely distracts babies, much like this commercial did to me. RVA Richie says, just get Tobes a mobile with Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler spinning, making buckets. <laughs> you know, you guys are jerks. <laughs> you jerks! You want to know something? I want to tell you guys something right now. <laughs> Don't come crawling back here with your heat swagger after Jimmy drops 35 tonight, all right? And we're just teetering on the sixth seed. Well, no, no, no. Don't do it. Teetering Don't do on it. the sixth seed? Just, just let me let you know right now. Don't come back to me saying, Tobes, you were right. I'm telling you we're back. If you guys want to doubt me, that's fine. If you want to call me a baby, it's mean. I don't like it. But okay, fine. Whatever makes yourself feel better. If I need to be your your heat clown pin cushion that you want to take pot shots at, fine. You can have it that way. But I'm telling you right now, this dude is back. All right. He always knows when it's when it's time to dial it up. And guess what? Right now is not the time Does to he? dial it up. Next Does week he? is the time to dial it up. Wait. If I recall, mm-hmm. did Jimmy not say it was time to dial it up in January? Yeah, you have a little setback, a little foot thing. You know, you gotta you gotta know uh, when to unleash the beast. Hey, you gotta know. Uh, so so question. If he scores 35 tonight, yep. it's not gonna have any relevance into where they are. It's not true. Okay. So where do you where? Let me ask you a question. You see them as the seventh seed? Well, we don't know. They got to play in first, or maybe they finish the six. How are they going to finish? They can't finish the six. They can't finish the six though. If, they're not. They're if not. Everybody out. else crumbles like they did. Not everybody else, it's two games. No, but I'm saying like they win their last two. Okay. Here's right. They okay, go here, here. Here's where it's I'm really not that complex. It's really go, not, you're making this absolutely like some jigsaw puzzle. It's not that hard. Okay, go. Win your last two, Orlando loses its last two, and uh, Philly loses the last game. Boom, up. Not that hard. Okay. And But even if Philly doesn't, and you set yourself up to have Orlando at home for a plane, <laughs> piece of cake. All right. Piece of cake. Yeah. Everybody here is being a bunch of worry warts. You know why? Because it's Cause a worry- cowards. No, been that's cowards. not what that's they not were cowards why. last year. That's they were cowards the year before that. And they were the cowards Tobin. the year before that. That's not why. Here, I have no doubt that he can win that oh, against really? Orlando. That like no, no. Here's what terrifies me in that sport. Okay. You could have a stretch where a team gets hot from three. And that could end your season because you put yourself in that situation. That's what I'm more concerned about. All right? I'm not concerned with what the Heat can do. I'm more concerned with 
the Heat putting themselves in a situation where a team can get hot, make a bunch of threes, your season's over. And 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 believe me, it can happen. It has happened to every team in the NBA. If it happens at the wrong time, your season's over. That's what bothers me. But what's your proof of that with Miami? It hasn't. What do you mean it hasn't? It hasn't. Like, what are these weird odds? Oh, oh, no, it's the other way with the Heat that they go one for 17 from three. Not when it matters, dude. Not when it matters. It has it not mattered the last two weeks? Not really. I mean, like, it would be nice, but it really doesn't matter. Dude, you can't. You Like, you know what? I'd buy your song and dance Mm -hmm. if any modicum, a slightest little bit of truth were to seep in there and say, oh, the Heat haven't just built a brick house from three and score 80 or 90 points and lose to a team they probably shouldn't have lost to? Second night of a back-to-back, off a double <laughs> overtime, banged out, don't have your starting point guard, you don't have your best three-point shooter in the oh, game. Like, there you go. I'm not going to sit here and Nobody, act like wait, something that okay. actually means and, anything. And, 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 and here's the deal. All that could be true. But if you go into the play-in, nobody cares, okay? And if you have one of those games where you score 85, 90 points, you're going to be watching the playoffs. Be honest with yourself right now. Sure. Okay? Sure. If the Miami Heat, are the, if they finish seventh, I know you won't pick them against the Celtics because you're a coward, but let's just say they finish seventh. Uh-huh. You really, you really, are you really nervous about any team in the East? No, that's not. Then what are we talking missed, about? You missed my point. So your okay, answer is no? You're, here's what you're your doing. Your answer is no, though. Here's what you're doing. But your answer is no? I'm telling you what I'm doing. Go ahead. Okay? I'm not making an assumption in the one-game sample that you're just going to go in and blow a team Don't out. The you're Don't doing that. The Don't be afraid you're of doing that. that. Avoid the question. You're dodging the question. They my question any, was simple. They can beat any team in the my, East. Uh, as uh, currently, they can beat any team in the East. I'm not. I'm not. Then what are we worried about, baby? What are we we're, worried about, baby? Wor- I, Do you not listen to me? You and me are on the do same Do you not page. listen to me? You and me are on the same page. Oh, my God. You're, we did the worry show cut. yesterday. Do you not listen to me? I'm listening to you. Did I say that the, he could not beat anybody in the East? No. I said mm-hmm. I'm terrified of a one-game sample when this team could go out and score 90 points. I think terrified is a strong word. No, really? Yeah, have I you say, watched this offensive team lately? Hear me out. I think no. Ter- you tell me. Should I not be worried that they could go out and score eighty-five points and lose to I'm anybody more- in the NBA? I'll be gonna tell you. Worried is a little strong. Terrified is way too overboard. Mm-hmm. Keeping an eye on. Keeping an eye on offensive concerns. I think is an appropriate place to be right now. <sighs> When it goes south offensively, it goes south. It does. It does. So, so in a one game sample, I am terrified that that could happen against anybody they play against. It's not a series. See, if it's a series and you have one of those games, you can bounce back. But in a one game sample in a play in, that terrifies me. And you know it's true. You don't know when it's coming. They're okay. not built for it, though. See, here's the thing. What are they built it's, for? It's what are fresh. they built for? Because I thought, I thought two weeks ago they were built to go on this run and not be in the play-in. Yeah, but we've already seen them blow runs before. Nothing new. And if it happens at the wrong time, your season's over. But if it happens at the right time, you're going to the finals. <sighs> okay. Like, it, it, I would just say this, right? There is nothing that I said in this last five minutes, that's inaccurate. But Same. you are being... I, I never said that it is. You're, you're being a buffoon to think yeah. that it's not possible and it's not part of the reality of what this team has been all year. Our just concern level is a little too high. We, 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 we've we been acting like the sky is falling. No, because you're wild. He's a coyote. No, that's not fair. Dude. No, not you are a coyote. Can, can I ask you this? You Stop seem to me, ignore man. the facts of this season. I'm not ignoring the facts. Really? And so... I'm not ignoring the facts. Wait, and so... What I'm saying and the concern that I have based on how they played is not real. All I said was <laughs> you terrified is a strong term. Really? Because it only takes term. it only takes one turn quarter and your season's over. No. No? No. 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 
Because if, we, if, if worst comes to worst, if we have to go play the Celtics, what do we care about those? Balls? You're making assumptions already. You really think? Let me just uh, uh, give me give me the odds. Let's let's do something grown up here because okay. you're, you're lashing out okay. a little bit. Who who are they gonna play? In the no, no, no. I, don't, I will make it. Let's make it Philadelphia and Atlanta. Okay. They have Be to play grown-up. Philadelphia and have to play let's Atlanta. Let's say it's Philadelphia and Atlanta. Let's say they play Philadelphia and I'll say they lose. Yep. What are your real fears? Give me the odds mm-hmm. that you think the Heat are going to lose two play-in games, and their season ends. Thirty-five percent. It's Trey Young. I'm just a little pineapple. I'm just okay, but, yeah. but you, know. you want to talk about babies? I mean, that guy sucks his thumb thinking about what the Miami Heat do to him defensively. Okay, please. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying that that that's real. What I'm talking about is real. It's 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 a it's a little. Uh... Well, what what do you think the what do you I think, think the chances are? Monger. I think you're being a fear monger. I'm not being a fear monger. What's the I'm being a realist? Yeah, I'm so being a realist. Asking, you're asking me a percentage of what is the percentage that Miami Heat actually don't make the playoffs? That they no, are no you good. no see that's not that's the way what, you that's, that's exactly not wait 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 Marcos that's exactly he asked what he Marcos he asked me a different oh, question oh, hey, you asked me a different oh, question oh, oh, Marcos, dude, oh, what do you think Marcos. the point of my question was Marcos did he not ask me a totally different question dude you are <laughs> oh, okay dude what are the chances the Miami don't win the zero dude zero Mar- Marcos <laughs> he has- he has- he asked me a different question. <laughs> You're the worst. Uh, I'm telling you something right now. There's no shot that the Heat don't make the playoffs. No shot they don't make the okay. playoffs. Wow. Okay. okay. Let me tell you something. In fact, if they do, if they do, if I'm such a baby, I'll do the show dressed as a Heat baby. Whoa. Okay. There's no shot that doesn't happen. We got action. Zero. Zero. Okay. You want to yeah. know why? Because I'm why? a grown man. All right. Oh. I'm a grown man who believes in my basketball team and Jimmy Butler on a horse. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. All right. Okay. I'm not a baby. I'm a grown okay. man with big balls. Belief in my team. Wow. Okay. Big diaper. We're going to need a big diaper. Just so you know. They make those depends for grownups now. Depends. Oh, this is. Yeah. The right. only thing that depends is whether or not we're going to kick the Bucks ass, the Knicks mm. ass, the Cavs ass, mm. or the Celtics ass. I don't care who it is, but I'll tell you one thing we're not going to be doing next week. Yeah, we're not going to be in Cancun. We're not going to be in Cancun. Okay. So all you Frady cats out there. It's who not don't here. Believe, here. It's, it's not a being a Frady cat, right? It, it, it's not that. But based on the way this season's gone, you can't say that it's just not a possibility. <laughs> it's, it's not, not it's a not concern. A it's not okay. a possibility. Okay. It's not a possibility. That's Outside see, of- and, and I would say that's your blind leap of faith nope. that I don't take. If if Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler get kidnapped, then maybe it's a possibility. Did they get kidnapped when they scored 20? Dude, it's a regular season game. Grow up. Okay. okay. Everyone has stinkers. Wait, like, so so see you you have to understand where I'm coming from with this. Because we had this same conversation. In December, you said wait till January. Then we had the same conversation in January, and you said wait till they get in the final stretch. And now we're having the same conversation again, and you go wait until the play and then the playoffs. Well, that's really what you, matters. No, do you do you understand this? That's right? good runs in February. So at, at at what point, you know, are we going to stop looking down the train tracks and realize that that's a real train coming? Depends. Is JFig on the way to work?
for our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tongue of Iloa. Not Tua Tag of Leoa. A for effort. Dolphins quarterback. Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. To go to hell. To a tongue of Iloa. Dolphins quarterback. Daddy loves you guys. Our Tua with Tobin and Leroy. Check the history of our two of the program, ladies and gentlemen. Tobin and Leroy here with you, 560 WQAM. Let us get to our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. He's back on the hardwood tonight against the Toronto Raptors. So uh, <clears throat> the only good thing about tonight's game is we don't have a show tomorrow. Why? Because, because you're worried Jimmy Butler's going to go off, and then I would be peacocking. Because you you have put yourself in in, a, in an interesting spot, Marcos. Here's where he's put himself, right? If he goes off and Jimmy scores thirty five against the Raptors, yep, right? He's peacocking. If he scores five, it didn't matter. Just wait till the play in, right? So so. These are the two conversations that Tobin has already prepared himself for. In the event, very disappointed. No, you you're telling me is well, come on, dude. Are you you're like I didn't, hold on. You're acting like I didn't hold them accountable after their loss to the Dallas Mavericks. It did, but I you, you know you got to have time to to soak on it for a day. And you know my feelings tomorrow are not my feelings yesterday. We've always had a twenty four hour rule on this show. I'm not gonna sulk about it. I'm not gonna be. A, I'm not. I'm not gonna whine about it. No, I'm gonna turn back my attitude positive, and I'm gonna be a grown up. Watch mm-hmm. some old Jimmy Butler highlights. Get myself hyped up. And did you mm-hmm. see him on that horse? Mm-hmm. You know what? Hmm? My daughter came in and showed me a picture of me playing football years ago. Yep. Right. And then I stood up and my knees cracked. I'm like, them days are long. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Right? Like, you watching 2020 playoffs. Yeah. But it's 2024, Jimmy. Yeah, but if you think about it, though, that was like the end because of the pandemic. It was more towards the end of 2020. So it's really not that long ago. In sports? The hell no. it's not. No. Okay. No. <clears throat> you telling me there's no difference between 32 and 35? Um, well, he's not 35 yet. Don't do that. Okay. So I'll say 31 and 34 then. Yeah. Nah, not yet. No? 34, 31 for me, same D's. For you. I was annoying you at 31 and I was annoying you at 34. <laughs> <laughs> Do not picture us. I picture us doing the show like them two old uh, Canadian football players. And then we just we're doing a show. We just start. You know who I'm talking about? Them old, them old, old, old. And they go when they played, they were rivals. And then the one guy reaches, <laughs> and the one guy stumbles because he he put too much effort in his punch, and they just basically knocked each other out without hitting anybody. <laughs> The uh, Marlins, they open up a three-game series with the Braves tonight. Whoppers oh. back on the line. That ought to be fun. Let's go. Uh, hey. First pitch is set for 7-10. Dude. Trevor Rogers on the hill for the fish against Max Freed. We need – can we get weekday whoppers? <laughs> we, like, I, don't want these, I don't want these guys to win and we can't come back and, 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 and use the code and give everybody the code. By the Maybe. way, Marcos, we need a I Sunday did use your that. code the other night. Did you? I did. Nice. Look at you. I did. And 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 here's here's the, the here's the crucial part. Mm-hmm. So we sit there eat pizza, right? And it's a back to back. And I'm watching the heat game 
and I feel dirty eating a 50% off pizza, watching the heat get their ass kicked. Oh, <laughs> right, right, right. The pizza's half off and they're down by 20 and you're like, okay. <laughs> Early, the price, yeah, early. The price, say today, yesterday's price ain't today's price because today's price is full price. The next, but like when you sit there and you're watching, if the Heat were winning, you're just like, man, I gotta do this again. I feel bad about myself. <laughs> no, I don't. Hey, I don't like. No, I. You know what? I'll do it. I probably, I probably use the code. Like here's was the kicker. I use the code around um, Super Bowl. I think they won. Um, it was not. It was either Super Bowl or National Championship, where I had people over. So I just got like ten pieces, right? So I was able to use it. So yeah, yeah, I've taken advantage of it a couple of times, but I just didn't feel like nobody felt like cooking, and nobody couldn't decide. And then I was like, you know what? Heat won last night. I want to just go ahead on and get a piece. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else? But, uh, oh, by the way, Hugh and Magoo's yep. opening up all over the place. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I've seen a couple more. Man. Um, but uh, yeah, getting ready for that Panther Stanley Cup run. Oh, yeah, getting ready for it. Hugh and that's that's good today. By the way, uh, speaking of horny rat, uh, here is our other angle that we have. Uh, oh, my goodness, there's we have received of, of horny Victor E. Rat who was dancing with uh, some Lady Panthers fans last night. And uh, I gotta I tell didn't you, know, this- I didn't know that he was. It was a look. Look at the look at the friend trying to get in on it. Oh yeah, All she right. she wants to get on that rat action. Back look, to look. back, though, really respectful. Back yeah. to back, of course, no. very respectful. No. And then no. he, he he ends up getting boxed out here. I We're just like. having fun, baby. We're just having fun. Oh, whoa. Like, whoa, whoa, box me out, girl. And that's the view we got. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but then, no, wait, then they do it. Nah, he like turn it back around. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know what good for him man there's probably plenty of nights in the uh in the office where that rat costume stinks you probably got thrown up on by a kid yeah maybe you get your ass kicked by a lightning fan hey you last know what's funny was a, you know last night was a good about- night for the guy in the victor e rat costume yeah. you know what's funny about the, the the mascots in all stadiums or whatever kids either love them or are terrified of them yeah. yeah, like in mom and dad, take a picture with the mascot. No, no, they're wailing. My son loves Victor E. Rat. Oh, thank God! I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if he's if he's scared. Like you can't you can't hit them and make like, hey, stop that! Like they're they're still gonna be scared. So what? I don't even know what to do. Do I just get away? You just never mind. No, just, just shuffle away. Shuffle, shuffle away. Yeah. Right. Uh, Leroy, can we get a Masters update? Yes, brought to us by the Lots Golf Shops. Home of the uh, 90 day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving golfers around the country since 1968. Edwin Watts Golf Shops, get there. Let me get to the leaderboard real quick because I like the uh, the leaderboard that has the names on it. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau still hasn't teed off yet. He teed off in about a half an hour. Uh, Max Homa has creeped up. He's playing with Tiger. He's minus one for the day. Uh, Nikolai Hogard is in fourth because Scotty Scheffler hasn't teed off yet. He's at six under also. Uh, mm-hmm. He's plus one of the day. Uh, Matthew Pavon uh-huh. is two under for the day. He is at four under. You also have Cameron Young, Danny Willett, who won it, uh, won it a while ago. Cam da- uh, is at four under. Cam Davis, Ryan Fox, Corey Connors, Byung Un An, Joaquin Neiman. And Will Zalatoris are all at two under, and you got a few at one under. Uh, other than that, um, most of the, the one unders tee off uh, either coming up or later on in the day. Uh, so that's where we are. If you're looking to see where Tiger is, Tiger is. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Tiger is at plus one uh, through two holes today. So he's plus one in the tournament. That puts him at 36th place. So mm. top 50 and ties make the cut. All right. So he should be pretty he should be pretty good because right now the cut is at uh plus two. Okay. And it is extremely windy. Uh but um other than that, that's it. RBA Richie says time for a remake. Maybe got rat. 
<laughs> Point. Uh, this is great. Tomorrow's the spring game for the Canes, and I got to tell you, this is Mario Cristobal. He's got me fired up for some spring football. Is Can I tough? ask a question? Oh, oh, it's tough. It's tough. Can I ask a question? Save your question. We will. Uh, we'll we'll okay. take. We'll, okay. we'll save. We will. Okay. Uh, we'll hear from the Miami Hurricanes head coach as we lead into some spring action tomorrow. Cam Ward, the new Canes QB, get to show it off with his new teammates. Back after this.
It's our number two -a with Tobin and Leroy. All right, welcome back. Tobin Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Take you up until two. Talk a little UFC 300. Great MMA reporter Aaron Bronson are going to join us in the fourth hour today we'll uh, talk a little ufc 300 with this with him okay okay and uh it was you know just proving my boys at a uh, bet ql they're like hey we need a, a part we need some bets for tomorrow and i was like selling to marcos that i'm going with my ricky bobby parlay leroy mm. first and last <laughs> hey so so can i ask my question now before we get into yeah yeah yeah. but can i tell you what my parlay is first yeah go ahead i'm going cody garbrandt knockout parlay it with jamal hill winning the title back knockout get plus 1900 all right wow let's go two bets plus 1900 yep that's, that's value well because it's knockouts it's yeah. cody it's what it is it's Co cody people don't worry about it. Co people think cody's washed okay but i think uh, he's got a little something he's got a, fly a flyweight coming up to to, mm -hmm. to his division what about our boy Bo? Oh, that's usually, and I will say this. It, it's almost like when a horse moves up in class. Yeah. It, like when you change, when you move up in weight, I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but usually you go up there and get concussed. Right? <laughs> like it's the craziest thing. Is your a Keynes question? Yeah. So right. I'm curious because where they have in the spring game seats about 8,000 people. Right. And I'm looking all over the country, and mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about the powerhouse schools. They're having these games in stadiums where they're getting 40, 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. Is that a interest thing or just a Florida thing because people just don't care about it? Because in North Florida or Tallahassee, they're, they're packing them in for yeah, the, the spring game. 8,000 8, capacity seems really low mm. for a spring game in a major university. Yeah, I think it's probably a, a – well, first of all, we always do this with the Canes game. Like, the Canes spring game is not like an SEC thing. Like, they'll do it at, like, high school stadiums sometimes just to kind of do it, do something fun in the community for people. Um, but I think also, like, Hard Rock doesn't have the, the race that looks like they're starting to build over there, so they probably can't do it over there. So, I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, like, you would, you know how it is, Leroy. They're coming off a bad season. Like, there's yeah. a reason the interest is low. Yeah. I, I mean, I, like, I got it. I, I mean, I get it. I just asked. Like, I'm not, you know, I, I don't think it's a, it, like, I've only seen that down here. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, they used to, and, and you might be right about availability and what options they really had. I mean, who was it taking to build that damn F1 race? A long time. Not... Wait, 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 wait. Dude, what are you talking about? We were in Vegas. No, that was ridiculous. Dude. Shut down. Dude, you could, you had, like, when I went to, um, so I went, when I went with Fonz, right? We look right across the street at the burger joint, in and out Burger, right? You had to go around on the highway over the same road, back through the back roads, and get back over there. Mm. And we could see it when we got in the car for the ride. So well, it, it's it's going to be fun. I, I mean, it looks like a fun event for sure. I mean, I yeah. think Vegas was a little bit of a disaster, but I know people love it down here. But it just feels like, man, they're back to building that thing every 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 spring. They get back to it. Yeah. Um, but the big news, obviously, Cam Ward brought in, declared for the draft, and he signed. He, you know, I should say he signed with the Canes, decided to come to the Canes. He didn't say signed. That's right. I didn't mean to say signed, but then I was like, eh, signed. signed. He came to the Canes, and uh, Mario Cristobal on Cam Ward says the alpha. This is, uh, this is Coach Cristobal. Well, I think quickly he uh, he earned trust, and he earned trust in the fact that he's up there in the office every waking free moment that he has. 
and he gets there early and he leaves late and he pulls aside the receivers and the tight ends and he watches his film with them and he takes the lineman out to eat and he spends time with the running backs and then he'll wait after practice and do some more stuff with other guys that maybe were off a little bit and then come in on Saturdays and get extra work and you know trust and confidence is earned it's not just given away and um, what he has done he has earned all right earned the trust of the people around him because of his time invested and the fact that he's he's an alpha and uh, when your quarterback well your quarterback needs to be an alpha wow 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 uh, was all now? right i got it what are you talking about? No, 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 I was giving no, 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 no. Marcos, 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 yeah. Marcos. What, what, what? You know what's funny? Mm. I was just getting ready to say the same thing. Mm. I don't, I don't necessarily know if Tua is an alpha. It doesn't mean he's not a leader. Yeah. Right. No, I and agree and, with and, you. and I agree. so, and Why, so you got to be a carnival barker. Like no, that's that, barker? and that's that's the point I'm making. I know a lot of guys that, for for example. Bernie Kosar, he wasn't a yeller in your face or whatever, but he was a leader. Bernie strikes me as an alpha. He strikes me as commands respect from everybody. He no, he me? does, but he he wasn't like one like a carnival barker. Yeah, no, like, a carnival barker. Like, it is how, it is how Bernie would come at you, bro, bro. You're gonna get me killed if you keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> like that's you know. I thought, I thought if it was a shot at anybody, I thought it was a shot at Tyler Van Dyke. Oh, at who? Tyler, Tyler Van Dyke. I and and I was kind of even though the dude's uh, muscles were falling off his bones, he did get his ass kicked. Oh, yeah, I true. mean, like, see, I don't. It's hard to look at a situation, Although, right? And attack one person. Although I was listening yesterday to Cam Ward a little bit, and he was like, "He's like, I watched." Was said one of the big sellers to him was the offensive line because he's like, they only gave up eleven sacks last year. He says, but really, they only gave up six that were on them. I was like, "Ooh!" So he's he's doing it too. Yeah, but not wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you. you want me to tell you how that works? Whoa, dude! You, you want me to tell you how that works? Yeah. That message. Did not come from him. Mm -mm. It was the coach he was watching the film with pointed that out. Oh, yeah. And he just conveyed that to everybody else. But like you it. best believe somebody, somebody was. And, and you wonder why. You wonder why TVD couldn't wait to get the transfer port. You right? wonder why, why TVD had another team's jersey on like three seconds after. It's like, wait, how did he get a Tyler Van Dyke Wisconsin jersey already? Oh, that thing! That thing was in the makings. Um. All right. Here's Mario Cristobal. You know, listen. He's tough. He's tough. All right. He says uh, this is what the spring game needs to show him. Well, you know, it's uh, the first half is live, and the second half is stud. But it's still playing ball. You know, we're still live, but just not going to the ground. You know, when you go into a spring game, especially all these spring games are nationally televised. You don't. You just can't do all the stuff that you've been doing this spring, right? That wouldn't be the right thing to do. But you want to see guys play with great fundamentals, great technique, and you want to see them compete and really try hard to win every single one of their one-on-ones, all their battles. And to continue building um, the DNA, to continue just elevating the standards for our culture, because at the end of the day, I think we're starting to understand that standards are actions, they're not words or slogans or T-shirts. So really, really fired up about the way spring has gone and want to finish it strong. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. What? Hold on. <clears throat> That's tough. <laughs> I hear everything he's saying, right? But let's be clear. Ain't nobody ever ran a whole bunch of nothing during during the spring game anyway. You mentioned it, oh, it's going to be on national TV. We can't show a whole – is anybody you, – you think uh, Network? Georgia Tech is afraid to see what Miami got? Georgia Tech might be, but North Carolina hasn't been. <laughs> right, like I, I mean, come I would on. Like, like to make I would like to make Mac Brown afraid one time. I would like. I, that. I would say this, right? Let's please get back to sport, and that means stop making it a big deal. And this is players, coaches, whatever. Stop making it a big deal about oh, they knew what we were gonna do. 
and you go out there and you just beat the guy across from you. That's competition. Okay. I hate that excuse. I hate when people say they knew exactly what we were doing. It, it is the single hand excuse to lose in a game that drives me crazy. Right. By the way, you can uh, listen to uh, the spring game here. Our coverage tomorrow begins at 3.30 on WQAM. Uh, you feeling fired up here, Marcos? I'm feeling tougher. So far, I'm, 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 feeling, feeling, I'm, feeling, very very tough. Tough. I'm feeling very tough. tough. Hey, uh, I'm not. What? Well, I bet you this one will. This is uh, Chris Law. I'll tell you. I'll and, tell you uh, soon as, I, soon, as I, soon as there's a message that exudes, mm-hmm. you know, okay, you got me. Right? I'll, I'll admit it, but it's too – Look, it's too far before the season. That's why I'm saying that. Not because not what he's saying can, you know. Like, once this is over, they're going to go take a break for three months. That's true. That's true. So, like, okay. But here's him saying uh, spring ball. It's about finding who's about it. Wow. I I would define it as strong progress. Really strong and real and tangible progress. I would also equate spring practice in college football because of the powers of be of They've come up with a formula, right? There's different things that affect rosters. Spring football for us is almost like minicamp. you got to find out what works, who works, who's in a culture, who's not, who can abide by policies, who can't, who's willing to compete, who's going to fold. you got to put guys through the test and find out. And it um, and allows you to make decisions that move you forward. And the good thing is a lot of guys have made some of these decisions hard because of their effort and their willingness to do things a certain way. So – uh, yeah, strong progress, mouth shut and working, brother. That's it. <laughs> you see. Wow, yeah. I, he, he was 100% spot on with that. Yeah, like, you need to see, Tough. you know, because of because of <laughs> all the new faces and yeah. the new people coming in and the young guys getting older, you do need to see who who's about it. Did you just say eat a steak? Eat a steak. Eat a steak. Eat a steak. <laughs> but yeah, so no, there's there's a lot to that. I hate it. I mean, let me tell you something. I hated that spring ball with all of my inner self because mm-hmm. there was no football games, right? So I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, it's also the last time they're going to play uh, football in a while in humane heat because once they come back for August, Jesus. Oh my goodness! Well, I guess they have the indoor thing now, but oof. that's not tough. You know, Chris, Chris Ball's gonna want to put that humidity. Uh, here's one more, just to wrap up a bow on Mario Cristobal. I feel tougher, really, which is not saying much. This is uh, this is their last chance to show they're competitive for. A I while. would say the consistency in and the willingness to compete. Um, I think. Uh, People say we're in a new day and age of stuff. I don't know, maybe in some regards, but not in terms of competing, in terms of being a good football team. And I think we're understanding more and more the importance of practicing really hard and taking care of your teammates too, you know, not going to the ground, you know, avoiding the avoidables. Mm. But understand that all these opportunities we get, I mean, after Saturday, we don't get to put on pads again until August. And then it's real right after that, right? So that's probably the most, the consistency and the willingness to compete and get better on a daily basis. Love that. Yep. I, I, I would agree. I would agree with that. I would say Tough. that you want to see your offense work as a unit. You want to see them compete against the defense. You want to see the defense competing and and mainly it's the offensive line and the defensive line. You want to see them competing in practice. Uh you want to see when it gets hot, when it gets difficult, that this guy is still gonna fight and try to compete and whatever. You want to see wide receivers compete with with defensive backs. That means even though you get grabbed, even though you get pushed, you don't turn around and complain. You keep fighting to get open, right? Stuff like that, right? Those are things where you can tell what kind of player you have versus a guy that's going to fold up, complain about he was grabbing me, complain about, oh, things aren't going my way or whatever. Those are things you can find out in practice and in spring ball. So, yeah. I like the fact too is like you know you know toughness doesn't change eras you know people say it's a new day and age you know there's TikTok TikTok's not tough oh TikTok TikTok go that's tough especially if you go second that is tough that's tough that's tough (laughs) and leave it to you (laughs) leave it to you and and your sidekick (laughs) eat a steak (laughs) hammerhead screwdriver (laughs) juice glass. (laughs) 
chew some glass. Dr. Tobias says, dead foot. That's not tough. That's not tough. <laughs> dead foot. <tough. laughs> Wait. Nerd? <laughs> Wait a minute. You're the only person I know that used the term of a serious injury. A term. And, 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 and you said, I had dead foot for a couple of days. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's people dragging their leg because they have real. <laughs> You're the worst. Give me PTSD. You're the worst. <laughs> and then Marco said, "Yeah, I did see you. Got kind of limping there. Uh, so <laughs> like, like, no, it was. It was. It, it was it, painful. You would have been. You would have been damn near dragging your leg like you had a stroke, dude. dude I That's literally what dead foot is. Had to hop through my house on one leg. No, you didn't. I swear. No, you dead didn't. foot. Dead Take a break. Take a Leroy's fancy next. <laughs>
fancy, huh? You, are you fancy, huh? Are you fancy, huh? Ah! It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to tickle Leroy's hoosie. My fancy is tickled. You know how it works at this point. If you don't, sorry. Leroy! What's up? The Masters. Tickle your fancy? Of course. Watching my it right now. Tickled. Start with the layup. Start with the layup. <laughs> Tickling my fancy right now. Tiger just bogeyed another hole. He's at plus two right on the cut line. Tell you what's not bogeyed. Those guns that he's got. Wow. <laughs> Bogey free zone. Dude, it's swole as hell. Uh, you want to play power forward tonight? You yeah. Know? I'll be watch I'll be watching. Uh I'll be watching it all weekend. You know what's crazy? Hmm? When I was a kid, when I first started watching golf, the Masters. Only allowed the television crews to film the back nine. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. You couldn't even. So, like, yeah, you they'd come on. It'd be like four o'clock. Uh, Leroy tonight at seven ten. Mm -hmm. Miami Marlins mm -hmm. taking on division rival the Atlanta Braves. Tickle your fancy. I said the Miami Marlins, Leroy. Start a three-game series with the Atlanta Braves. Who, who's pitching? A uh, friend of the show, Trevor Rogers. Um, <clears throat> no. Um, but here's here, here's right. why. Here's why. Not because I'm not interested in the Marlins, because I, you know, still wait for that Whopper Marlins. Um, <clears throat> but because the coverage for the Masters is going to end at about seven thirty. And that's going to take me right into what your next tickle my fancy is going to be. Correct. The Memphis Showboats take on the <laughs> Birmingham Stallions. <laughs> week three of the UFL season. Hey, I've been paying attention. You are a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not interested. All right. Wow. We got NFL teams I don't want to watch. Mm hmm. Anybody wanted to watch the Patriots last year? Was that must see TV? <laughs> no, but this is about, about the Jets. Oof. Okay. Rough. Thank you. Definitely rough. Uh, tonight at eight o'clock, Leroy. Yeah. The Toronto Raptors take on the Miami Heat. 14 and a half point favorites tonight, your Miami Heat. <laughs> so here's how my night goes, right? Well, first is a ticket of fancy. Yes. I'm, I'm... My fancy is tickled. Man. Let, you let me do tickle my fancy the way I want my fancy tickled. You right. don't tell me how to know. So I'm going to watch golf. I'm going to watch golf while I'm watching golf. I'm going to grab the Horde clan and Mima. And I'm going to say what y'all want to eat. I will order it. I will go pick it up. That'll be about 730. I will heat up my jacuzzi. I will eat food. And then I will be in front of... Of my outside TV in the jacuzzi with a beverage at eight o'clock watching the Heat and Raptors. Well, the Raptors have lost 17 out of their last 20. That don't that says so did Washington. Mm. Means Jonte must have been betting the under. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Is he away from the team? Is he oh, banned? Yeah. <laughs> Where is he? Uh he's definitely away from did the team. Did they release him? Like what what's the deal? I think since it's still pending investigation, they haven't released him. Is he on? Do they call it administrative leave where they still pay you but don't come around the players? I'm not boots on the ground tonight. I'm going to go Sunday afternoon. I'm very excited because Why I didn't. Why are you boots on the ground tonight? Because I figured it's the nah. same team. I'll go, I'll go when the season's over, you know? Okay. I'll go in the last game of the season, okay. you know? Okay. Uh, yeah. But I am looking forward to uh, our favorite coach, not named Eric Spolstra, uh, Radakovich. Oh, oh. He says, this is a complete of the BS. Oh. <laughs> I would have loved to get that guy's reaction to the whole uh, scandal with John T. Porter, like his honest reaction. Because yeah. that guy is great. Love his voice. 
basically be Serbian or Slovenian, anything. And I love your voice. What happened tonight? This is completely BS. This is. <laughs> By the way, did you see this last night? Uh, Kevin Harlan was on the call for uh, mm. TNT. And uh, you know when shenanigans go down, Kevin Harlan is the best in the business, it seems. The streakers, whoever, uh, people, yeah. people trying to elude security. Well, last night, apparently, somebody pulled a Leroy because we know with Leroy, when he eats chicken wings, they can get loose, you know, sometimes under the car seat and uh, the bones are just there. And apparently this happened last night. Uh Go ahead, Marcos. Williamson's got it. Pelicans hold on. Driving into Murray. Somebody's throwing something on the floor. 46 seconds to go, and a whistle blew. It's a chicken wing. Why would someone throw something that good out on the floor? <laughs> it's crispy. Yes. It's warm. Yes. And I almost had to go out there. I'm so hungry. Uh -oh. uh, here's over here growling. What's that guy? I hope he eats it. No, no, that's like, like he's so not I'm so with it. I didn't really no. that's so much. Here is the funniest part of that. Yeah. It just uh, somebody throws something on the floor. I believe it's a chicken wing. Why would anybody waste a perfectly good chicken wing? I am so hungry. <laughs> like, must be anytime Leroy's in studio, just from hour one on. <laughs> but that's, you know what? Here's what happens. First of all, you, I always ask, because I'm not going to just eat food by myself, <laughs> right? And it takes you clowns, right? 20 to 30 minutes to even figure out, okay, what you feel like eating. Then we got to look at the menu. But then it's almost time to go home. So I'm getting up. I'm like, come on. I feel like most of the blame goes on Uber drivers who don't follow your directions. Oh, and especially Dude. don't let them be on the scooter. <laughs> oh, no, no, listen, can I, can I listen? Nobody wants their hot, delicious food dangling between your legs. He's right about that. Okay. Like, it's just, it, it like, no. Like, go head on. You make a couple of Uber runs. Get the little hot pack you put on the back. Right? But come on. Really? There's nothing worse than seeing somebody pull up and, and they reach down and pull your food from between their legs. Still not the best call we've heard on an NBA broadcast, though, in regards to food, because we have the hometown one for that. Deflection by PJ. He catches it, keeps it. He's now in my lap. There's hot tea all over my slacks. That is hot water, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> and on the other end, <laughs> it's a shot made by Max with the throwdown. So a dunk in my pants of hot tea for your boy. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, you know what's funny? Jax could do that by himself and amuse himself. Oh, yeah. So he don't care if nobody else is enjoying it. He's having <laughs> himself a good time. Uh, he's probably in so much pain, though. <laughs> so much pain. Uh, oh, God. You ever get some, like, tea just unexpectedly hot on you? No, oh. dude. You What happened to me Um, when we had uh, – um, it wasn't a Super Bowl party. We had a party, right? And we had the little, you know, the, the pans with the hot water and you put the food in. Um, my nephew picked up the pan and it was loose. And he dumped the hot water on my leg. Oh, my God. Right? And I'm like, I'm cursing. I'm like, whatever. Is it, and one of, and it, his sister goes, uh, calm down. Calm down. It was an accident. Sir? Like, my leg is on fire. Calm down, sir. <laughs> yeah. So. Like, yeah, so no, I knew ooh, hot anything, especially on the on a spot of your body you ain't expecting to have nothing hot, right? Because listen, if you get hot on your butt or in between your legs, you just, if you take a hot bath, sometimes you have to do like the like the rabbit, you know, uh 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 what's cooking, Doc? Rabbit. <laughs> uh Leroy tomorrow at 3 30. Just talked about it a little bit. The Canes. You guys can share the coverage starting here at 3 30. Uh Canes spring game. Take it your fancy. No disrespect. Hell no. Oh. Is it on the ACC network? Fancy not tickled. 
Yes, it is on ACC Network. Irish potato peelers. Or that you gonna see that horse commercial? Oh, they should. That should be Jimmy Butler's infomercial every time, every break. Yeah. By the way, and you know I'm, what I'm starting to hate here. Here's what I'm starting to hate because I have Direct TV, and there's certain channels like Ion or whatever. When they break away from a show you're watching, they'll show a, a five minute Cindy Crawford infomercial while you're watching your show. I'm like, what the hell? I'll tell you, man, that drain weasel, it's almost got me a couple times. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember him texting that him too. Like, it's oh, a I'm drain a weasel. Drain weasel, not that bad. I just think it's, you know, I got gross kids. They're always clogging yeah. up their sink. I'm like, you know, that drain you weasel. Have, you have any shedders? My fiance is a shedder. So, like, that, I may need that drain weasel. Yeah. Oh, my, no, need. I'm going to tell you what's worse. Y'all tell me if it's worse. You ever get in the shower after your wife or your girl or whatever, and you step in the shower and it's a damn slip and slide because they you've put hair care products in their hair? Oh, oh my God. I'm like, hey. Conditioner is slick, dude. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, yeah, I need conditioner. <laughs> right? So I'm going to die in a hair care product and I ain't got no damn hair. RV Richard just says Solana is just a weasel. <laughs> oh wow! I gotta tell you, <laughs> name image, name image and likeness. He might have to, <laughs> he might have to pay the weasel. <laughs> oh man! That weasel, uh, might, that, that weasel might call into the show and say copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only weasel. All right, that's all time I have for tickle my fancy. Take a break. Back after this. <laughs>
All right, welcome back. Tobin and Leroy. Take you up till two here on the program. Let us get to some cat talk brought to us by our friends over at Celsius. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out when it's game time. Make Celsius a part of your play and get that energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of your Florida Panthers. Ooh. You know, I still haven't tried the Galaxy Vibe. Mm, so really? Sad. So sad. It's what the hell are you waiting for? I just keep getting the free ones over <laughs> here. For some reason, I expect it to change. <laughs> I'm just like, it's oh, a I'll, lot. We have a lot of ones <laughs> over here. Of hey, I'll, I'll, I'll bring some. I'll come in. Uh, well, evidently, evidently, they, they're they not working on my roof today. Oh, oh, they, mm. they're still on lunch from yesterday. No. If I tell you why. Cool. They Did you check their rating on Yelp no. before hiring them? No, I golfed with the guy for 20 years. They hit oh, you with a rain out? Right. It was your friend. No, not a rain out. You ready? Hmm? They ran out of tiles. Oh. Out of tiles. See, I thought when he said it wasn't rain, I thought we were going to go too windy. No, too know. windy. Wow. They, they ran out of tiles. All right. All right, if that's a thing. Mm. Okay. I, 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 <sighs> Watching right now, Leroy, currently the UFC 300 weigh-in is going on. Mm. Oh, it's funny because we're, we're so different. Yeah. I am now watching. Oh. Mm. Xander Shoffley. I got that on too. I'm watching uh, Phil, Mickelson. Phil Mickelson. Oh, no. How are you watching Phil Mickelson? Uh, he's uh, like on him. ESPN. Four. Two. Oh. One. What are we on? No, I'm watching. I'm at. I'm. If you go to the Masters, you can watch. Uh, this is ESPN One. Oh, so the, it says live in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But I guess he's just. I think he's just warming up because it's. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's tea on the range. See, they can't show the golf yet. Okay. But if you go to Masters.com, you can watch uh, feature groups. Oh, most okay. four, five, and six. Amen corner. <clears throat> so right. yeah. So you got golf on. I got UFC 300. So far, no issues with the uh, weigh-ins. Good, 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 friend good. of the show, Bo Nickel, has just weighed oh, in. Yes, he makes weight 186 pounds. All the he he has the fun props because people hey, have like. When was the last time you hit that weight? Oof. What what was he weighing in at? 186. <laughs> I was 186 in the tenth uh, grade. Wow, I'd say a decade ago for me. I went, I went, I went, I was also, um, let's see, when I got to Michigan, I was 205. So, yeah. Crazy. Oh, by the way, the uh, the the Victor E. Rat is now going, uh, it's been retweeted by uh, Bleacher Report, Open Ice. So Oof. this is uh, now definitely going viral yeah. of our, Again, though, he our, handled our horny rat. Hey, you say, it didn't go this viral when I got my ass kicked. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um. All right, let's go down to the Panthers locker room last night. Sergey Bobrovsky, shutout. Here's what Bob oh, yeah. in one. In terms of things you want right for the playoffs, uh, defensively, goaltending wise, seems like everything's in place for you guys right now. Yeah, guys, guys work hard. You know, it's it's uh, sometimes it's not easy uh, to play those games. You know, uh, but I thought guys did a great job. You know, they 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 did the right things. They uh, play great game in offense. You know, and they they uh, defend very well. And for yourself, we have two games left, but do you feel like you're, you're ready to go here? It seems like you're in the zone. Yeah, it's, you know, like uh, you go, you approach it one day at a time, one moment at a time. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited about the upcoming challenge. How important is it to start to, to be starting to find, to find your guys' groove again this close to the playoffs? Yeah, it's definitely, it's a, it, it is important to build the chemistry, to build the good feelings in the locker room. Vibes. And I know, you know, well, yeah, it's you know the fans fans here are unbelievable. So I yeah, appreciate them for this for the support they gave to me this year. It's it's, it's fantastic to play. Bob, what do you think of uh, Victor E? I was right? getting ready to say it. It's like uh, it, it, you know, it, it's really cool. Can I just that, have, uh, can Victor E. Rat was getting his groove on. Can I please have him on next week just to ask him about that? Yeah. I have to hear it. Falkust. He was very Falkust. Uh, Bob, I know you're usually very Falkust during the game, but uh, what were your thoughts on Victor Erat getting twerked on? Mm. He has moves. <laughs> very Falkust. <laughs> oh, 
All right, there you go. Sergey Bobrovsky getting the win for the Cats. Let's get to the rest of our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Supercenter. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Heat back in action tonight, 8 o'clock, 645. Preheat was Solana, or as RVA Richie likes to call him, the weasel. <laughs> that was out of left field, but Leroy appreciated it for sure. So uh, Solana gets going, 645. I believe he'll be out at the uh, East Plaza if you guys want to go say ah. hello to Solana. It's a, been, Only two uh, more times. Been having them out there. Uh, well, maybe for the playoffs too. Oh, um, that's true. That's don't true. worry. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it, get your get your mind right. I just want to see you dressed as a baby. No, dude. listen, <laughs> I cannot wait. It's not gonna happen. No, it's I, not gonna happen. I don't want it to. But I kind of want to. No, but I don't, don't want it. No, to. it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Ridiculous. <laughs> With that little thing over the head. Oh, the cool. bonnet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not gonna wear a bonnet. You gotta use a rattle. <laughs> it's gonna be good. I mean, this, yeah. Because he's gonna, gonna be, he wait, he's gonna be whining and crying. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen because the heat are gonna the heat are gonna be in the playoffs. So it's not gonna worry. I'm not worried. They're not getting bounced from the from the play ins, um, on multiple games. Ridiculous. One, one game sample. Terrible. Well, in that case, it would be two. But yeah, I get your point. Um, what else we got? Uh, Leroy, give us a Masters update. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. All right, we have uh, two atide the top. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau hasn't teed off. Well, he has teed off. He's through one. Uh, Max Homa is also at seven under right now. So that's pretty cool. Scotty Scheffler hasn't teed off yet. He tees off at 148. Uh, Cam Young, Taylor Moore. Cam Young's at five under. Taylor Moore is at four under. And Nikolai Hogard, Danny Willard, Ryan Fox can uh, are at three under. You have six at two, and a few at one under par. But if you're even par, you're tied for twenty fifth. Wow! So it's not you know the cool thing about the Masters is you get to the weekend, you're usually not that far off. Nobody runs away with it. Um, so you probably just want to get somewhere under par as far as Tiger is concerned. Tiger is plus one. Plus so one. Oh, it's better. And, uh, that's two, not, two bogeys, two birdies. Was he uh, plus two before? Oh, I thought you were referring he to was plus two. Oh, minus yes. one. No, he was plus two. But he's right at the cutoff line. That's what we say. You know, the cutoff is plus two. You're yeah. also a golfsman. I'm also a golfsman. Yeah, Four. <laughs> no, that's what they say before they call your name on the tee. Yeah, well, four, please. Now driving. Ooh. I got to tell you, there's some pretty big names that are doing a trunk slam. My guy, uh, Adeki no. Matsuyama, he's four over. Sahit the Gala, he's uh, five over. Keegan Bradley, six over. These, uh, Jordan Spieth, seven over. Dustin Johnson, seven over. Mm. Brian Harmon, who was my pick, nine over. Yeesh. And Emiliano Grio. He is plus 13 over. Mm. All right. There you go. That's our update. We'll uh, take a break. That was our Masters update brought to us by the N. Watts Golf Shops. Get there. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Flip back on over to the Heat. 15 minutes Heat. Next.
Heat is sponsored by Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, home of the $8,000 trade. Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram.com. 15 minutes. Bum, bum. 15 minutes of heat for you here, 560 WQAM. Oh, hello. Hello, hello. Jennifer. Ooh, yeah. hey. Why is it, why did you have like an uncomfortable greeting? Like you mm. were you not were you, were you uh, I was unco- I was uncomfortable because I was hearing you guys double. I had to mute you guys on the other on the other <laughs> Hey, <laughs> power through professionally. <laughs> hey. This is hilarious. I'm struggling. Look. Day South is at it again. Tobin doing the show if the heat get knocked out. <laughs> part of me wants that to happen. I know. Me, that's not. We put, not can I just say this? We put ourselves in some god awful positions on this show. It's not going to happen. Wait, I know. Listen, it's not all likely. I'm saying is if it <laughs> happens, oh you better wear a diaper. All I'm saying is I'm tired of everybody being so afraid. Nobody's I'm afraid. Oh, no, I'm nobody's afraid. afraid. Here, I'm not Fear afraid. All over the place. But here's here's the deal. But I don't like being in situations that could have been avoided if you had handled your business sooner. Okay. To get it to, to be put in a situation where a team can get hot and just shoot the lights out because it happens in the NBA. I would rather not be put in that situation. The uh the heat tonight, no Duncan Robinson remains out with his back problems. Terry Rozier questionable, so that's a good sign with his neck issue. So hopefully he will uh make his return tonight. You, you look like you were gonna say something. I'm sorry. Who me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, he was questionable the last two games, too. So he got downgraded, though, in the middle of the day. Like it was saying, oh, doubtful. So okay. I don't know. I think they had shoot around. I think they had shoot around today. Let me see real quick. Yeah, they better have some shoot around. <laughs> well, sometimes they do shoot around early in the game, like in the early in the afternoon. Yeah, they had to shoot around earlier. No guts uh, on this Leroy Horde, am I right? Let me ask. Uh, and there you go. There you go. Come on. They better have shoot around. You know, he was riding a horse through the streets of Winwood. Give him a second. Not the easiest means of transportation. A second? That was filmed a while ago. TikTok. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, there's no allegedly. There's after that, there's editing. Show business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fine though. Bam is returning from South Beach. Jimmy just Dunked from the free throw line with a horse. I just needed to see Jimmy on the horse. Look, I know Bam's going to bounce back. He can have whatever method that he wants. I just wouldn't say it out loud. If that method was to go to the beach, that's fine. I just wouldn't say it to people. I wouldn't shit. Some thoughts I keep on the inside. What local goes to South Beach, too? Like, come on, Bam. I don't know. Yeah, right, well, maybe, we, maybe he's got an easy route to South Beach. That's you don't fair. know where his house is. That's true. He lives right on the water. Yeah, he might just, he might have a. Yeah, uh, but he might... probably lives on the bay. Not that I, I don't know. I don't know where Bam lives. We don't mm. know. I imagine he lives somewhere really nice. Mm. That's what $160 million can get you. I don't think maybe. so. With another probably two hundred guaranteed coming up on the next one, I'm so thinking, uh, Opalaka. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> by the swap shop, by yeah, the he, swap shop over there. He lives in that uh, that Khabib warehouse that they got a uh, absolutely that guy that was there for like three seconds. That's tough. It was tough. Did you go there? I did go there. Mm. I did Not go there, there no more. Well, we got into a war with Russia. They kind of closed oh, up shop. Okay, well, that's fair. <laughs> Made it harder for, I mean, their entire roster was Russian, and it was tough for everybody to get over here. Yeah, that is a fair assessment. So they were like, you know what? I don't know if this Eagle FC is going to work out over here. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking forward to it because I was like, ah, maybe we could become buddies with Khabib. Yeah, that'd be cool. Didn't happen. though. Next Didn't time. happen. Tell you what, think about Khabib. Beefy. Beefy. He was enjoying non-retirement life. All of it. Yeah, so so there's no chance he's ever coming back. No? Oh no! I held on hope. The word from the, the, uh, Cormier uh, put out there, and they were teammates. He said that he got offered forty million dollars to come back, and he said no. Man, you know what, dude? You need to to put your standards <laughs> and moral high, <laughs> and you need to fight for forty oh, million dollars. I do. By the way, I do remember that. Remember what? <laughs> when Zazzle asked Bam, 
if he had taken his kids to Disney World. Oh my god, wild. yeah. He had, a couple of <laughs> he had a couple of awkward interviews with Bam. But the, the one where he asked Bam about, uh, hey, Bam, you ever been to Disney take your kids? He goes, I'm 19. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you drink? Oh, I'm like, what? I feel like it's, a, it's hard to have an awkward conversation with Bam. Oh, he found no, he did it. The fact he that he it. found that way. He did it. He did it. That was, uh, that was, that definitely did happen. Truly First of all, it, he could have very easily said, "Hey, do you like Disney?" and opened it up to. Bam. I don't remember. I think maybe Romberg was coming back from Epcot or something. I don't know why Disney was a topic, but I think it was like something on the show that day. And he was asking about like, "Oh, have you ever done the tour of a uh, tour of wine or whatever it is at Disney?" And he goes, "Well, I'm 19. I don't drink." And he goes, "Oh, well, it's a great place to bring your kids." He goes, "I don't have kids. 19, sir. Oh, I'm a child. Can I find that somewhere?" I'll find it somewhere. I, I'm sure yes. we. I'm sure somewhere in the archives it's around. That's I can find it for you, Jay Fig. Uh, so anyway, give you an update here. Last night, uh, the big news in the NBA was the Knicks beating the Celtics. Celtics got their fourth loss all year at home. Um, beat them up. Beat, beat them, up. them up. Holy smokes. Beat them up. I think the Knicks are still alive for the two seed. Yes. And uh, last... the New York Knicks. Mm -hmm. Those Knicks. Yeah, the ones that we saw recently, two seed. They did get back. Uh, I believe Ananobi's back, so that's insufferable, definitely... dude. Insufferable. Oh, they're going to be in. Ben, can you imagine Ben Stiller as a two uh, seed? I don't even want to look at his Twitter right now. What about RVA Richie? What about him? What about him? You're Not thinking RVA of Richie. Richie. I'm thinking Richie of Richie from, from Boar's Head. Richie from Boar's Head. Yeah. Richie from Boar's Head. I'm sorry. Uh, no word of no word from him after the Heat beat the Knicks recently. Where's he been? A ghost. Haven't heard from him. You know, right. That's fine. We can hear from one that's a Heat Knicks playoff series again. The Heat are gonna hey, by the way, mm. slow your roll. You got other things to take care of. Hartenstein. Hartenstein. Yeah. Is this Ben Stiller? Try to go one day without tweeting about Jalen Brunson. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the standings right now. Obviously, the Celtics have that puppy wrapped up 62 and 18 on the season. Luck. Uh, good record. Uh, 49 and 31 for the Bucks, who uh, have the magic. Magic tonight? Who do they got? Tonight? 41 and 30. What 49 and 31. Okay, I was like, what? 49 and 31. They have uh the Thunder. They are in OKC tonight. Yeah, that's a big drop off from one and two. Yeah, it's a bit it, yeah, that's Huge. a very they're 13 games back. So that's why do you make anything of the Knicks beating up on on, on Boston? Still 13 game lead in the East. Um yeah, I mean, I think there is something to like it all goes away very quickly. We saw this with the Bucks last year. Like, don't right. lose one of your first the, two. The problem is, is that the thing that I would always question about Boston, they shoot a lot of threes, a yep. boatload of threes. Yep. And if you get cold that you get cold at the wrong time, you know, now you're up against it. And and that, that's that's just the thing. Do they have other ways of scoring? You could put as many threes up as you want. You keep it if you do keep it, and I'm sure there'll be games in the series where they blow whoever out in a in a game because they but, make 15, 20 threes. Yeah, right. There's going to be those games that they have. I but if there's a game they don't, like you said, and then it gets down to the clutch, those two guys, Tatum and Brown, game on the line, <sighs> their butterfingers. We'll see. Woo. Um, but the Knicks are just a game back. They are just they so they are still alive there for the two. Heat, they uh, are locked into the play-in tonight with a magic win or a loss. They are still a uh, game back of the uh, Philadelphia 76ers who have the magic tonight. So it could be a situation where the thing that you want so far for the Heat is you want Orlando to lose if you want them to be out of the play-in. Uh, that the Heat got to win their last two, Orlando has to lose their last two, and Philly has to lose to Brooklyn on Sunday. Otherwise, you know. Brooklyn, yeah, not likely, not likely. So you have that, but if it's Philly wins that last game and the Magic lose their last two, and you win your last two, you host the playing game. I would think it's next Tuesday. Yep, the seven eight. Uh, in the West right now, Denver has the one spot. Minnesota, it's close. The, it's close in the West. Yeah, Minnesota, OKC, they have the same record. I don't know who has the tiebreaker there. I could get the. Uh, scenarios who did they put first 
Oh, uh, right now the Nuggets are first overall. No, I'm talking about between Minnesota. Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota has a tiebreaker. They they usually put it when they put the standings. They usually put it all. Yeah, that so they weren't playing each other or anything yeah. like that in the last two. Um, then you have four. You have uh four fives. That's locked. That's that's Clippers Mavs. That's you all know, set. You know what's crazy? Hmm? That the West is a perfect picture of old guys out, new guys in. Right? Because you got Steph, you got LeBron, you got all them in the play in, and all these young players yep. are at the top of the West. Yeah, the only real established guys that are doing the well Suns? are the Clippers. No, no really. even the Suns. Even the Suns are in the Suns are in the play-in right now. Right. So you got the Suns with KD, you got the Lakers with LeBron, and you got uh, Golden Golden State, State. who they might not even make the play-in. No, they're going to make the play-in. Everybody everybody is locked in the play-in. So just imagine those two or three games. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, cause like look, they have the ideal play in way that it stopped. Like the thing that has sucked is the East. Cause the East has two teams. Like they were saying this on the, on the broadcast last night. Like if the heat lose the play in the first play in, I think Chris Haynes was asking, he goes, is it really necessary to have them play the bulls or the, or the Hawks now to last year's point, it took to the last three minutes. So you may say yes, but a lot of people are like, what's the point of that second East game? Like the heat are eight games better than the team behind them. Like, they should really lose out on the playoffs over that. Yeah, but the same way you did it, somebody else could do it. Oh, I'm... Hey, right? I'm, like, I'm not... I'm not... I'm just of the opinion. I am of the opinion, have the playing game. Chip in the chair. I am of the opinion, have the playing game. If you lose to the, the Bulls, it, I'm going to be just like a baby. You know what I mean, Marcos? Yeah, I'm Googling that right now. Chip in the chair is a poker term. Chair. As long as I have a chip in one chair, I have a chance to win the tournament. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I agree. That's wise. Leroy's there with that pie guy. He has one chip. He'll be there forever. <laughs> yeah. You know, drinks. Hey, hey, I told you, I told you, it's a drinking game, baby. You can drink. You just sit here and mess around with people and whatever because it's a very slow game. Right? Yeah. Have okay. some fun. Um, so, yeah, so they were discussed that last night, but it is, uh, but in the West, I mean, yeah, the West, that, that, that's Adam Silver's dream right there. Now, the only bad part about his dream is, well, you're going to, you're you probably some lose, stars. You're going to lose Steph or LeBron. So, <laughs> right. Is, well, is it important here? Is it really as important that you lose Steph or LeBron in the West with the way the West is? It'd be more crucial if they were like in the East and they didn't make it, right? I think the mat. I think the match is so great, but I think the ratings tell you that those guys are like needle movers, like nobody else. And so, right. yeah, losing one of them and not being able to have them in a series, right, right, is, right, is, is brutal. Um, I would like to see them play. Like, let's play for it, right? That would be cool. Oh, it's gonna be an amazing night. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's gonna be a great. That's that's gonna be well, a here's fun. What, night. Here's what I hate. The the heat. So do they sit everybody if they already know what they're the heat? You know, yeah. For the last not not tonight. Game? They they I mean like no, do you play tonight? But if if Orlando wins, it's over. If Orlando wins, and you, no matter I think if Orlando wins, you would still be open to hosting the play in because you have the tiebreaker over Philly. It goes what seven it goes seven. Does it go uh do I seven, want ten, eight, nine? Or do they do? You no, know, it goes eight. seven, eight, nine, ten, okay. and then okay, and then but seven gets the home, and then you, it's it is a little weird. Why don't you play the two stinky teams and then, like I feel like that does make more sense what you're saying, but the way they do it is seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven and eight play for seven and eight. And yes. Then eight plays the nine, ten for eight. For eight. Right. right. So if you win so, the first one out of seven, eight, you're the seven seed. Right. So if you lose tonight. Or if you win tonight and Orlando wins, then you still have something to play for. But you're basically just playing for a home play, a, a home playing game. Which, to Marcos's point, do you want that? Good question. They're not very good at home. <laughs> not very good. <laughs> like they help build Brickle down here. Yeah. Like holy it's, smokes. It's a good question, but um, <laughs> shut up, Schmeethan. 
He's like, I'm glad you guys explained it so clearly. I feel like we're doing an okay job. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of balls up in the air here. It's their fault, to be honest. It's not our fault. It's not, not our fault. Plain but if, they, if they lose tonight, then, yeah, they could probably just use Sunday as this. They could sit everybody basically up until Tuesday if they wanted to. I think because not, here's, oh. it, think about how this goes. If you don't win both of these games or it doesn't work out or whatever, right? You're coming right back on Tuesday, right? And so that's going to be five games in what, eight days? Yeah. So you're not helping, like, all the things that ail you or the bang-ups or the soreness of the I older think, guys, you're not helping yourself. I think also if Philly – if, if Philly is still in line to host – I think it's not till Wednesday because I think there's a Flyers game. So then you might be even more incentivized to just rest because you get an extra, extra day. Right. Gotcha. So we'll see. Tonight, 8 o'clock, tip off from the Kaseya Center. We'll have that for you. 645 preheat. Take a break. Mix things up. Coming up next.
No doubt now. Uh. Don't put your country twist on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. It's that time. It's that time here on a Friday. Let's mix things on up, dude. What do we got here, Friday? Uh. <laughs> All righty then. This mix bag is brought to you by Broward Health. Broward Health. Well into your future. Yes, indeed. Now uh, we have quite a bit on our slate today. This bottle of water is too big. That is a huge bottle of water, but I'm proud of you for balancing your caffeine intake with your hydration intake. When you say balance, oh, <laughs> one for one, it's not really a balance. I do see two Celsius, so Celsius. I don't know what the I, I've had a green apple today. Celsius, but Celsius. you guys will be proud of me. I'm only like a fourth of the way through this one. So, look, I have this one that I cracked open this morning. Yeah, I'm still going at it. Yeah, still right. going at it. Dude. Good, good, good. Responsible, you can take a horse to water, but I also, oh. I also have this so. Woof. Mm. Uh, what do you got? I, tried, I tried the Tobin method. Mm. Just black. Just straight black, baby. What do you got today in the mixed bag, Marcos? I got a bag filled with $300,000. That is, of course, if I am awarded a bonus this weekend at UFC 300 by Dana White. Ooh. As you know, during these major events, fight of the night and various other reasons, People are given bonuses, but they are never usually $300,000. Special event, special amount. This is what Dana White had to say. What did you say? Both guys want bonuses raised from 50 k for the special card. Can we make this happen? What should it be raised to? Three times. 100000 300. No, three times. 300. 300. 300. 300. 300. 300. It's done. It's done. Whoa. 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 Look at that. Hey. hey. Now, if I may, stop asking me questions. That had a little WWE feel to it. You think uh, that reporter was a plant? Let me, no, or or the, the guys yelling. Well, the guys yelling are the fighters. Yeah, but still, but still, even they they know Dana because they say fifty thousand, a hundred thousand. So they know Dana, right? So it must have been it must have been pre-planned because also Dana would tell him shut the hell up and fight. <laughs> so there's also that, right? But I think, me personally, I think this is an indication of what they feel about the card. That they think they need something to spruce it up a little bit, right? Hey, because when your best fight or the fight that should be number one is third, them other fights better step up. 300,000 will do that. So that's going to be usually they give out. What two bonuses in a fight of the night? So that's that's over a million. That no, is nine hundred thousand. No, because if it's fight of the night, they don't split the three hundred thousand. They each get three hundred thousand. Oh. oh, okay, my bad. See, I thought it was just the winner. No, same fight of the night goes to both. Oh. Yeah, because it's fight, not necessarily. Well, which is even which is even. So he's giving more incentive for them to go out and beat the hell out of each other. Don't yep. be grappling. Don't be holding and hugging on on the cage. I want to see haymakers, kicks. I want the full everything. Yeah, that absolutely. He's trying. He's trying to pick up the card. I'll tell you what. It it does sway me uh, betting wise because I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right. You know, people are going to be swinging for that finish. And you know, some people are susceptible to mm -hmm. <laughs> peeking, <laughs> taking a little looky loo and getting a, getting a foot in the teeth. What else you got in the mixed bag, Marcos? Last UFC 299 was where, Tobin? Down here in Miami. Down here in Miami, what some people like to refer to as their home. Mm -hmm. One of those people. Dolphins quarterback Tua oh. Iloa. Definitely feels like home to me. Um, you know, I, I've said this before, but this is where both of my kids, you know, were, were born. This is where we're going to raise, you know, our family. 
uh, with me and Anna. And um, this is the, the city that, that, you know, chose me um, to be their quarterback. Wow. And I'm very grateful. I'm very honored for that. I don't take any of that lightly. And so, you know, I, I definitely call this home. Let me ask you something, Marcos. Can yeah. I say this real quick? Can I say something real quick? <laughs> as long as Tua has been married, Great. that is the yeah. first time he has mentioned his wife's name. That's what I was thinking. Yes. That's what you're going to I, yeah, I, I was going to ask this. Yeah. How do you feel about yourself, dude? Oh. You hate that guy? <laughs> I don't hate How do you him. feel about yourself, dude? I don't hate him. How do you I feel say. about yourself, I huh? I hate him. Don't, how do you hate that face? Look at that face. Uh, a little less Christmas, huh? A little, a little more. Everybody's saying, look slim. Everybody's Does look saying, slim. looks good. Hey, he looks good. Dude, um, can I, I just please? Can you? It's a natural, it's a natural problem. How does he feel about himself? How does he feel? Well, listen, you, we've seen people go naturally the other way, Jamarcus Russell. So Yeah. You know what's crazy, though? Like, the, the thing I'm most impressed with Tua is, no matter how bad it's been, no matter how unfortunate some of his situations have been since he's gotten down here, he's been that dude. Right? And whether you like him or dislike him, you have to respect the fact that there's a lot of athletes that wouldn't be able to maintain that demeanor with all that he has been through. Fair enough? Yeah, so you got it. You, if you don't like him as a quarterback, you got to respect him as a person. Yeah, but he doesn't. You don't. Oh, no, I, you I, don't. I, I How do you feel, that. dude? I hope you never, feel bad. I feel a little bad. But, I hope you feel bad. I, I mean, I've never said I And he says he's bad. not holding out. Not holding out on Mike McDaniel because he never would. Well, it's off. Which is exactly what they want. Exactly. Look at him. Oh, so you wait, 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 wait. So you think like we're gonna we uh, we made what we thought was a fair offer to Tua? No, they here. You can say what you want. These teams play this game so they can. You see what I mean? So to say when he says I would never hold out. And I would never do this. You best believe that goes into what the team now offers. You know what? And how they go about doing their business. You guys owe me uh owe me an apology now. I think about it. What do you mean? What? Just, Why? Everything that, everything that I predicted or or I said needed to happen is happening. I wanted more mobility. He's slimmer than ever, looking quick. Oh, okay. I apologize for not telling you to go to hell quick. Oh wow. Wait, wait. Yeah, apology. Yeah. Says you you understand who's demanding that a person is more mobile, right? A little empty. You are a frog. A you're limited, and you're saying you're making demands on somebody else to be mobile. Just a little bit more mobile, and you know what? He doesn't need to get paid this off season. And so okay, far, looks who's a little. Last, can I ask you a question? In all yeah. fairness, who's the last mobile quarterback? To win Super Bowl. Do you consider Patrick Mahomes mobile? I, I, I do consider him mobile. Yes. Okay. He had some very crucial runs. Okay, but being but but having here, having the ability to make a play every now and then doesn't make you mobile. Although you want to say who's, yeah. I'll tell you who's not slim, mm. Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I don't hear you saying he, that, he definitely looked like he enjoyed the ice cream cone right before the Super Bowl. Right? We actually have the same body. <laughs> I'm furious with these Chiefs, man. I'm, I'm just, this damn Kelsey. Like he 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 shacks up with old Taylor Swift. And he invents the fade, and now he's invented oh, dad bad. bod, too. I'm like, this is ridiculous. you got to realize that he's not the one claiming any of these inventions. Oh, sure he's, he's not. not denying sure it. he's not. Oh, yes, he is denying them. Hey, can Never. I just tell you? He can't just think, hey, on anything think around. About, think about what uh, Tom Brady went through to take care of his body. Think about what Aaron Rodgers goes through. Didn't Lamar Jackson. Trump. Right? Patrick Mahomes. What do you got? Three Super Bowls? He just, he just showing up. And he just, I'm dancing with what I got, baby. Let's go. Uh, what else we got in the mix bag today, Marcos? Speaking of quarterbacks, the alpha. Oh, Cam Ward. He's tough. This is his new nickname. Heard it here first. I do like that. I like that. Uh, loves Miami the Love same up. way Tua does, but there's one drawback that already has stuck out to Cam Ward. And he's I'm a 27 year old, uh, he's 21, 27. <laughs> You're a bastard. Jesus. Chris Winky, 
This is what Cam Ward had to say about his opinion on the city of Miami. I'll probably say the fishing for sure. Uh, big fisherman. I caught a, I caught a couple uh, snapper, mangrove snapper. So uh, I want to go mahi uh, fishing. I haven't did that yet. Um, but I'll probably say the least favorite though is that traffic. The traffic ain't no joke though. I tell you, it don't matter where you at. You on Red Road, you over here, US 1, that traffic ain't no joke. Especially. No, like, hey. Look, come, traffic's bad here everywhere, teams? but that campus. Oh. That campus is terrible. Oh my goodness. Oh, so bad. Might as well like, walk it. All you need to know is soon as as uh 95 ends and you go to federal, it's over. No, it's oh. over. 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 All he's right. 21. Yeah, he's only 21. <laughs> oh no, you know what I'm thinking of? Penix. Isn't oh, Penix man. been playing college basketball, college football Penix for like older. seven yeah, Penix. years? Well, Penix yeah. Had, yeah, Penix had a bunch of ACL tears and mm-hmm. And no, 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 no. He said I'm confusing him with McCormick. No, mm-hmm. I was I was confusing him with Penix. Sorry. Because I knew there was a quarterback that was old, old. Like Chris Winkie old. Chris Winkie went in the first round and he was 26. Well, and he never played long. He never think, made it to 30. I think Derek King when he came here was a little older too. I think he yeah. was 23 when he got here. That's See, to me, that's one more year at 23. That's fine. Uh, when, when you start getting in the because now teams got to evaluate your situation. He's okay. In fairness, he's turning twenty two next month. You know who's that's actually five, young. That's Tua's, five years. That's five years. Tua's brother. What about him? Tua's little brother has been in college football so long. Somehow he's actually older than Tua. Strange. <laughs> 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 In college years, he's twenty four years old, bro. Twenty four. If he doesn't, if Wait, he doesn't... he's only like two. Is only what twenty six? Tell you, the Dolphins are definitely gonna like bring in to his brother, right? Like, no. just... is he not? Is he not gonna transfer? Nobody. He's... Nah, I don't think so. I don't think oh, he's yeah. eligible. He's, he's out. Eligible. Remember, he was trying oh, to. Like... They, yeah, he tried to get another year. All those rumors that he was gonna come down here, but he couldn't get eligibility. Tell you what, right. not invited to the combine and had a horrible pro day, from what I'm hearing. Looks like we can get him on the cheap skis. No, why do you cheap skis? That's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough for Skylar Thompson. Two, <laughs> two words. Yeah, graduate assistant. Hmm. What if Tua says? What if, what if he's like, listen, I'll sign for thirty five a year. Oh, but oh. your bro- but you got to sign my brother. Oh, I'll sign his brother all day. How much is that gonna save me? Look at that. His brother's like fifteen million. Go. Twenty million? No, no, no. I'm not talking fit. No, he's he he gets a, a Zoran Dragic oh, minimum yeah. deal. Three. I, I'll, I'll give him three million. How about that? But I'll no. take. A, but, but Tua takes a haircut. That's, that's more than a haircut, dude. That's a military buzz cut right there. That's yeah. Right. What are you talking about? He's gonna make point. 50, 55 million at a what minimum, and you want to give him thirty five? Fifty five minimum. He's gonna be so rich. Well, listen, old man. He's such a good guy. I, look, I like this uh, this offseason, too. Uh, he's he's looking pretty tough. He's looking pretty tough. We'll take a break. Back it's, called, this. it's called development, jackass.
badgering me on the other side. Hey, see what I got coming up uh, the draft. <laughs> Why didn't even? <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Let's get to our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Uh, the Heat, they take on the Raptors tonight, 8 o'clock, 645 preheat with Solana. Panthers shut out the Columbus Blue Jackets 4 nothing. Our boy Bob, Big Bob with 25 save shutout. Back-to-back shutouts for the Cats. Oh, that's good. They were both Bob? No, one was Stoli. Even better. Yeah, oh, remember, I no, because remember we had the uh, the parlay. That's right. Yeah, and he was like, "Oh, my mouth yeah. said my mouth tricked you." I'm like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> great." Uh, UFC 300. We'll talk that a little bit. Of that Aaron Bronstetter from okay? Sportsnet. No, uh, looks like we're good, man. Nice. I think everybody made weight. Um, the only guy I didn't know if they did was uh, Jamal Hill, but I'm pretty sure he never misses weight. So nice. Yeah, it looks like uh, Armand Sarugi and Mayweather. Kayla Harrison was the big question because mm. she was uh, she fought at 155 for PFL, and they don't have a 155 in UFC. They made her get it all the way down to 135. What? She looks like a skeleton because she is she's she's wow. a jacked woman. Like she's yeah. in very good shape. You know, two she's one, and I think she's one. I don't know if it's two or three million in mm. the PFL, but she's the PFL. You know, they do the million dollar tournament. She's won that at least twice, maybe three. I forget. Wow. But um, who's she going against? Holly Holm. Holly Holm. Nice. Holly Holm. Who's old? Yes, yeah. but good. The you skipper. Know, Be Ronda Rousey. She skips back and forth across the ring. Yeah, she does. It. She does. And uh, yep, knocked out Ronda Rousey very famously. The first woman to ever defeat Ronda Rousey. Rousey recently spoke about that. She was like, "Oh, wow. I was concussed going into it." Oh, get and, up. Uh, oh, and Holly Holm went. Like, uh, is is there a fighter? That has worn their welcome out more than her. Yeah, and it bums me out because she's she really- was like the the poster uh, for you know that ge- the the fight game at four minute. Everybody round around, see round around, and she, she just ruined it. She was great. I mean, like you know, there's no women in the UFC if it's not for her. She's a very important figure. But she also did the same thing in WWE. They kind of yeah, they were. You know, Bad some days. people, some people, hey, listen, some people are pain in the ass. I Isn't still appreciate it? her because I thought I really enjoyed Ronda Rousey's career. I thought she was and awesome. And then even Serrano, Serrano, Serrano. Uh, she, get Serrano. Off of, uh, she did something too and got. Uh, she was in Fast. The, she was in boxer? one of the Furious Five. And oh, then Gina, Carano. In, Gina Carano. Oh, Gina Carano. Yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, she got out of the Mandalorian. She's, she, uh, you know, tweeted right. some. <laughs> she was, stuff. she was all in because she was in Deadpool. She like yeah. What yeah. the hell? Hmm. I know. Um, anyway, we'll talk a little bit of that with uh, Sportsnet's Aaron Bronstetter, bottom of the hour, and uh, go over the card. I uh, appreciate Dade South. He's like, oh, I put a little five ski on the old Tobes parlay. I got the Ricky Bobby parlay first and last. First and last knockouts. <laughs> Cody Garbrandt, Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill did make weight, by the way. How much did five dollars get me? Uh, that would be a hundred. Well, right. Well, no, oh. so if a hundred dollars would get you nineteen hundred, then uh maybe ninety eighty five eighty five bucks. No, I'm sorry, a uh not ninety five bucks. Yeah, I'll take that's pretty good. Get you a hundy. Mm-hmm. I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, five skill little hundy. Take a look. Now it could be over be. first thing of the night. <laughs> well, that's good. That's the problem at first you last, but the anticipation is if you hit it first, yeah, all you get to wait all, all night. night. <laughs> that's fun. Dude, you got. Uh, I have only made one wager in the fight game ever. Oh no, two. Because I, I, I no, bet the, the last. Oh, the Mayweather! I made a killing. Dude, oh yeah, I you had... got you got tricked into the last one by uh, Thurman, right? You bet the. Draw. Yes, yes. <laughs> so yes. convincing, though, dude. Well, he was so, up. dude. We were what dabbing happened? each other up. We, oh, it was, oh, like he was so convincing. Was, he was supposed to fight last week against yeah. Tim Zhu, and he fell out. He got an injury like a week before the fight. Oh, get out of here! Yeah, that and, sucks, dude. Yeah, Boom. I've been waiting to get my hands on these boys. I've just been waiting. Still waiting, oh guy, man. He's hey, best. so yeah, hey, Marcos. Yeah, a killing, mm. a killing. I was the only one celebrating. I'm like, hang in there, hang in there, Connor, hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> 
great. Uh, man, the uh, the Masters, Leroy, give us an update from the Ed Watts Golf Shops. Get All there. right, we got you. Max Homa, Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau's even on the day. Max Homa's two under. Scotty Scheffler hasn't teed off yet. He tees off later this hour. Then you got Nikolai Hogard, Cameron Young, uh, Danny Willett, who's a previous winner. They're at four under. Uh, you have three at um, at three under. You have five at two under, seven at one under, uh, and that's top fifteen. So if you're in, if you're under par, you're top fifteen. Tiger currently is at one over, um, which puts him well inside the cut. The cut is currently at two, maybe three. Uh, so he's just make turning the back nine. Uh, so yeah, other than that, that's, that's really about it. Uh, so a bit breezy. <clears throat> so guys are struggling, right? And just right. as I look, Bryson DeChambeau is now six under. We'll take a quick break. Get back with more shenanigans after this.
You know, I'm just trying to have a good Friday. You know, minding my own business. Got the yeah, heat back today. Got the Marlins series starting. Got the spring game tomorrow. Is this BGs? Yep. Uh, got the Masters going on. You know, just trying to enjoy a little Masters, baby, right? I'm watching it. And I'm watching you it. Know it. Wouldn't you know it? Marcos and I are just trying to enjoy our Friday. And who's here to ruin it? Solana! No. <laughs> oh, what? This oh, man. Mother we can't. We what? can't say anything. Yeah, they just went to commercial because he, he left. <laughs> oh, man. But you want to know who the, who, who the ESPN just interviewed, Leroy? You want to know who they just interviewed? Take a wild guess, Leroy. Take a wild guess. Who, who do you think they interviewed? Who would upset Tobin this much? Uh, a lot of people. That's true. I know. I'm trying to think. Oh, Kyle oh. Lowry. No. He's back, he's back on the screen. He's back on the screen. <laughs> oh, oh, get him out of here. That's <laughs> okay. of them already. He has a, a special... Wait, JJ. JJ Reddick. Oh, JJ yeah. Reddick. No, bad. it's not. It's, oh. not, it's not JJ Reddick, but I saw JJ Reddick in person the other day. Handsome. But uh, let me just say it with him. It's enough of you. <laughs> Not as handsome as Mike Breen, though. Mike Breen's put together. True. You know, he's got to go. Dude, he's just trying to watch a little match coverage. Hey, can we have, I don't know, golf people on? Mm. But no. Who do they have to go with, Leroy? Who, do I, Who do I have on my shoulder? Ryan. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can Ryan. I just say this? Dude. I would have been there. Did. I would have never guessed Ryan. Why is he there? Literally, why is he why there? Why is he there? And why is he? What are you doing and there? Why is he there? What do we have that? to say about this? You bum! Why, why do we ask this guy his opinion on anything? Why? He stinks. He why is he wearing a leprechaun hat? hat? He actually calls that his master's. Hat. Oh, does he? He yeah, calls yeah. it his did master's he hat. That? He did. He, he did. calls it his master's hat. Could yeah. you ever could you ever imagine being so mediocre at something and everybody just went, oh, let's have Ryan on because he has a beard. He's not particularly interesting. It's not like he says wacky things. It's not like he's particularly insightful. No, he has a beard. Find anybody else. Anybody else. Just trying to enjoy my Masters Friday. And who's here to ruin it? Fitz. Patrick, a rat, a bum. Sick of it, dude. Yeah, I knew that was not going to end well. <laughs> so this is oh, and TV. it's green. Yeah, the yeah. Masters. That's because of the color of the Masters. No, I get that, but no. Are you sure it's not for all the money he's fleecing people out of? <laughs> <laughs> or is he part Irish? Yeah. You know who else is he, there? He does oh. kind of look like a leprechaun. Who else is there? Uh, Richard Hamilton. Do you see him peacocking around? Like, no. Why aren't we talking to former NBA champion Rip Hamilton? Why am I talking to a guy who's never made the playoffs? Never made the playoffs. Never made the playoffs. Mm. Never. Wow. Wow. I can say I made the playoffs half of my career. Look at that. More Never than made it. the playoffs. A gazillion teams once led the, led the Miami Dolphins in rushing. The season, not a game. That's a knock on the Dolphins. They did not go Ryan Fitzpatrick. Incredible statistic. That is absolutely crazy. Rough. Do we have Miles Gaskin that year? Makes sense. <sighs> Dude, why, why is Miles Gaskin getting hit by shrapnel? Because they put Ryan Ryan Fitzpatrick. it's not my fault they put Ryan Fitzpatrick on and upset me because it's like I'm just trying to enjoy my golf coverage and who shows up with a green hat? Not the you know. Lucky Charms guy, okay? This bum Ryan Fitzpatrick shows up for what? Is he even like a like a like you know Seth Curry golfs? He does that, you know Patrick Mahomes. Seen him in does the he whatever golf. Have He's you ever gone. seen him in a pro am? I've never seen him. What did you want him on your team for? So he could slice it nonstop. Somebody, somebody said Ron Pitts. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's yeah. out here, and he's just my opinions about the gym. They took my team. Yeah, you're right. They did. You want to know why? You stink. In the three minutes of his interview that we watched, one of them, one of the minutes was dedicated to his special hat. Another minute was dedicated to name dropping. And the final minute was talking about how there's no phones allowed at the Masters. 
and how he oh which he hates probably because he's like oh damn dude (laughs) less selfies for me no attention he said he's getting out of there early since there's less attention i can't believe this so disappointed in the worldwide leader there's got to be better people to talk to yeah gotta be gotta be better people to talk to than him Mm. You think anyone's going to recognize me, Rip, with this hat? <laughs> yeah, dude. Everybody knows you have the stupid beard. We get it. You think Rip Hamilton knows who he is? Apparently, he was hobnobbing with Rip Hamilton. <laughs> who is made more off of their beard? James Harden or Ryan Fitzpatrick? James I would Harden. say Ryan Fitzpatrick. No. James Harden, James Harden, look. James Harden gets a max contract every time he's up. Yeah, but not because he has a beard. At least he made it to the playoffs. If James Harden, even if James Harden had to shave his beard, like he'd still get a lot of money for playing basketball. He could shave shave his beard and get another five years because people would think it's somebody else. Probably. Probably. But like this, that's the only reason anybody has him on there for that stupid facial hair. Have you seen, have you ever seen him without a beard? Ryan Fitzpatrick? No, 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 no. no. Oh, James Harden. Yeah, Yeah, not good. Not too good. Yeah, and I remember Ryan Fitzpatrick without a beard too. He shows up. He showed up that one year. You you, you stole Conor McGregor's gimmick. That's all you did. Oh. That's all you did. Stole his thing. His thing. Mm. It's a, another mediocre white guy with a beard. Wow. That's it. That's all you are. Intangibles. <laughs> made the playoffs. Uh, let it go it's it's amazing we're sitting here during break you know trying to end the show it's been a good week we got a busy weekend immediately this I'm guy really sorry you have to end your friday this I friday have had the golf on have ufc coverage on in here it's a fun mm-hmm. friday in the studio and that um had to come on my screen that beard that beard Did that beard and that green, i can do that green hat I can do that. Well, big deal. I don't know. Big deal, dude. I have that for Ryan Fitzpatrick in three weeks if I wanted to. <laughs> three weeks. That's all it take. I don't think so. Basically, right there, right, <laughs> right there now, man. You can maybe really? get three. That. Dude, can I tell you? There is no way in hell. As long as I've known you, I've never even seen you with rough. Because I, tr- I choose not to. Okay. I choose not to. You could let that grow for a month, and you ain't getting. Oh, I, I would be. Oh, it'd be a woolly mammoth. Oh, <sighs> terrible. A baby woolly mammoth. Mm. Oh man, I need to calm down. I need to calm down. Talk a little uh, UFC. A pros pro. A man who's not a show pony. Mm-hmm. Aaron Bronstetter. This guy is one of the best. If it wasn't for this Helwani peacocking all over the place, wow, this guy would be Helwani. All right, mm. and he's Canadian. Way nicer. We love the Canadians on the show. Nicer. Love them. Love them. <laughs> With that being said, Raptors are going down tonight. But oh, yeah. everyone else. Oh, yeah, dude. Take a break. Talk a little fighting coming up next. This hour of two.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Very excited to talk to our next guest. You guys know we are thrilled. UFC 300 is this weekend. We just had UFC 299 down here a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, man, that was a crazy atmosphere. That was a crazy card. This one might actually uh, top it from a depth perspective. And uh, we have just one of the best reporters in the business joining us here. Aaron Bronsetter joining us, courtesy of Bet Online. Check out Bet Online for the most up to date fight lines and props for UFC 300. Aaron, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks so much for the time. Hey, thank you, Ben. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, this is uh, very exciting, this card, obviously. You knew they were going to stack it up and down. What do you think is flying under the radar as far as like all of the, the fights, all the props? What's one that's, that just personally tickles your fancy that you're excited about? Yeah, I think Diego Lopez against Sadiq Yusuf is an interesting one. I mean, Featherweight is such a stacked division with so much talent. Nobody's really talking about this fight, and I don't really blame them. I mean, you look at the amount of star power on this card. If you're making me make a hipster pick, I think that's probably going to be it. I think Diego Lopez, the way that he attacks submissions, his aggression, his striking improvements have really been on display. I think Sadiq Yusuf is a great litmus test for him at this uh, part of his career because Sadiq Yusuf is an excellent fighter in his own right. Has there been anything this fight week that is, uh, I guess, surprised you from you know any any personal fighter's attitude or, or outlook on something uh, in particular this week? I mean, Jamal Hill is very calm, and he kind of always is. He's got like this kind of quiet intensity to him. It's not that he's a quiet guy. He's actually very talkative. But there's just uh, something when you're around him that you can feel kind of the intensity that comes with him. And, and with that is also kind of a, a calm, like he's – he doesn't seem to be afraid of anything. Like He just seems to just approach things moment by moment. And when it comes to getting into the cage, he doesn't really change his demeanor at all. He's just he's confident in his abilities. And I also saw Kayla Harrison, who uh, you know, trains out in your neck of the woods, and she's just absolutely shredded right now, making 135 pounds. Like I don't think that she's probably hasn't been 135 pounds in like 10 years. And now she's trying to cut down to make bantam weight because there's it's the, the heaviest division for female fighters right now in the UFC. And she just she looks great, and I think that it's going to be interesting to see how she performs at this kind of a weight class where she's just not accustomed to to being that size. Yeah, that one I was I was very surprised. I, like when she learned she's on, I was obviously very excited about that. But uh, yeah, you've seen Kayla in person. Normally, I've seen Kayla in person. I, I was like, I don't know how that's going to happen. But she her I mean her biceps, everything like she's looks shredded. Her biceps look bigger than her head. But it's uh. I am uh, I am pretty curious. Are you worried about performance at all with her in this one? Because Holly is obviously as tested as anybody in this. Um, or do you feel like the odds are right on this one? Because Kayla's a pretty overwhelming favorite. I, I think if I was betting on her at that price, I'd be very worried. Uh, you know, I think that Holly Holmes is obviously a very stiff test for her in her first UFC performance. But we're also talking about somebody who's won two Olympic gold medals, you know, in, in judo which historically Americans haven't really participated that much in, let alone medal as, as gold medalists. So the amount of drive that she has as a human being and, and her drive towards excellence is the thing that I think makes her such a big favorite in this fight is we know what she's capable of at her best, but can she perform at her best when she's not walking around at her optimal weight? Uh, for this one, there was so much made. You mentioned Jamal. So much was made about the main event, and you know they were everybody was hoping there was going to be some kind of hail mary. But this is this is a pretty you know banging main event. This is this has been a snake bit division. It feels like ever since John Jones left it. Um, do you feel like we get the winner of this, and and hopefully there's going to be some continuity of injury free and controversy free and all that for a, a little bit, or uh, do you feel like the weirdness at two hundred five will continue? I really hope so. But when you look up and down that ladder at 205, there's only like one fighter. And I think it's the 15th ranked fighter that's under 30. So we're seeing a lot of fighters right now in their prime in this division that I think are going to make some noise in the coming years. I mean, you mentioned John Jones. Since he's left the division, there's only been one successful title defense from a champion. And that was against Israel Adesanya, who was coming up a weight class. So I, I think that right now we are kind of hungry for some sort of continuity like you mentioned, in this weight class. You know, Jamal Hill never lost the championship after he beat Clover Teixeira last year. During International Fight Week, he was playing in, a, I guess, a celebrity basketball game and tore his ACL. So kind of a freak injury that's not... You know, it's always crazy when you have fighters and they get injured playing basketball, right? Like, I mean, yeah. they're in a sport where, like, you're designed to get injured, so to speak, right? Like, you take so much damage. He goes and plays basketball, tears his ACL, go figure. But doesn't lose the belt. Belt is vacated. Ends up being a, a bout between Yuri Prokhashka and Alex Pereira. Awesome fight. Pereira wins. 
what he's done in the last three years in the UFC is just absolutely unprecedented, becoming a two-division champion after being a two-division kickboxing champion at the highest level. It's such a great main event. I mean, this, this card top to bottom has so much talent. And if you know the game, you know how good of a card this is. The, the problem is, like you mentioned, you were looking for a Hail Mary main event that would kind of draw in the outsider. Doesn't not really there. You know, I spoke to uh, my colleague, RJ Clifford, called this uh, a love letter to fight fans. That's really what this is. Th these are just high, high level fights from the, the very start of the night to the end of the night. Any of these fights could headline a, a UFC fight night card except for maybe Brundage versus Bo Nickel. I don't know if they, they would put that as a headlining fight for fight night, but just such great talent across the board. Yeah, you put on, uh, I just saw on your your Twitter, you put a crazy statistic odds-wise about it. It's, uh, what was it? It was like plus 550 for it to be in a minute or or plus four something, but it was like the difference between winning yeah, and round two in a minute. It was yeah, like, it was, it yeah. was crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, what what do you, what do you want to see from Bo Nickel? I mean, he's obviously, it's fascinating. It's great to see him, I guess, in this, what's, Odds wise is looking like a squash match, but uh, man, I mean, he's he kills everybody he gets in there with. I mean, I would just love to see him get tested even a little bit. I mean, is that too much to ask, right? I mean, Cody Brundage isn't uh, some walkover. He is a guy who has UFC wins. He's been around for a while. This isn't a guy that they're just bringing in off the regional scene for him to squash. But at the same time, if you look at odds on a week to week basis in the UFC, you don't see minus 2300 ever, right? Like this is pretty unheralded to have on a card like this that's so talent laden to have this much of i guess what you would almost call a squash a squash match at minus 2300 like a total showcase it's very rare and i, I think probably cody brundage is feeling about as disrespected as you can feel if he's looking at these odds knowing that he's been in the ufc and, and maybe could give bo nickel even a little bit of trouble you know i spoke to bo yesterday and i was saying like people are gonna eventually start like trying to find things that you you know might might need to improve or aren't quite as good at yet but like you haven't shown any he hasn't gotten hit in his fights like he hasn't taken a single strike a significant strike i don't think since his very first outing in any mma contest so i think that anything that happens to him where he looks a little bit human people are going to pounce on that little thing and that i think is good for bo nickel because i think it'll just motivate him given the kind of competitor he was as an amateur wrestler and now bringing that into mma what what do you think is uh the 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 way right now these you know quote unquote, like young rising stars they do feel like they're trying to be more savvy in the way they're as look like a guy like Sean O'Malley taking his time before you know he gets to the title shot and you know ended up turning out to be right but I look at a guy like Cody Garbrandt who you know wins the belt at 25 I don't know if anybody's going to do that anymore where they just jump into the fire have a uh you know a rise to the title like that quickly what like when you talk to these these fighters these days like do you notice that like that being a thing of them wanted to pace themselves because i think we've all said like hey bo nickel why don't you go fight hamzat like like just do it already and and uh and get to it yeah you know it's funny that's a great point because if you look at the bantamweight division and sean o'malley like sean o'malley is considered one of the young champions in the ufc right now but historically in the bantamweight division we've had guys that have been younger than sean o'malley when he won the championship even though he was still relatively new to the ufc hen and brow was younger Piotr Jan, I believe, was younger when he first won the championship. You, you know, you mentioned um, Cody. Sorry, who did you just mention? That? Yeah, Cody was younger. Like I, all of these guys were younger for the most part than Sean O'Malley, who's like the young champion in the UFC right now. So it's pretty interesting to see. And I think you're right. I, I think that again, if you look at the standings at heavyweight and light heavyweight, I think like a large percentage of them are born in 1991 and 1992. So that would make them like 31 and 32 respectively, or 32 and 33 respectively. And there are maybe, I think, three fighters that are still in their 20s of the top 30, if you amalgamate those two, like if you look at light heavyweight and heavyweight. So a lot of these fighters right now in their 30s seems to be when they hit their stride. And young champions seem to be uh, a thing of the past, but you just never know. There's always going to be those young phenoms that come up that are able to win belts early in their career if they, if they get an early enough start in the UFC. Yeah, I remember I was talking to Cody uh, before his last fight, and you know that's a, you know that's a guy I think everybody should report. Like everybody kind of thought he was going to be one of the faces of the UFC before the whole grudge match with TJ. He's not old, but like it, it's tough test. He's opening this up against Figueiredo. I think you know people are thinking they're questioning. They still question his chin. You think there's any Cinderella? Another chapter of Cody Garbrandt's career, or do you feel like you know it kind of is what it is at this point? He's probably he probably got his peak moment. Well, I think it is what it is, and I don't think that that's a knock on Cody. I think that if you look at the bantamweight division, it's just so stacked 
that in order to make up ground in the division at this stage in his career, it would take a lot. Like, I, you know, beating Davison, of course, would be great because Davison's ranked. And then that automatically just brings you back up into the rankings and you can go from there. But right now, the Bantamweight division, I think, is the most stacked division in the sport. I think that if you look at outside the UFC, even at the PFL, like their Bantamweights that they acquired from Bellator, are, I think some of them would be top five in the UFC. Like this division just has so much talent. So for Cody to be a champion again, it's going to take a lot. And I think that he's, of course, up for the occasion, you know, up for it. But you mentioned the doubts about his chin. I think people are always going to have those doubts in any fight that he has from here on out. So uh, the one that uh, everybody's saying is people's main event, obviously, BMF title, Gaethje, Holloway. Uh, what are the things that this matchup uh, in the lead up to it, like what are the things that you find most interesting? Because, I mean, you, I don't know if you could find two more beloved fighters and pretty even, and you would have very good reasons to why each one would win. Like, what is the thing that I guess intrigues you the most about this matchup? Well, I, th I think the matchup itself is what's intriguing because you would never expect that these guys would be matched up against each other, right? Like you got Holloway right now, who I think a lot of people said, you know, if you ask who should Ilya Topuria face next, they'd say Max Holloway. And then you've got Gaethje, who's very close to a title fight at 155. But this, I think, is like kind of the one kind of dream matchmaking fight that we have for UFC 300, a fight that we just know are two of the most consistently exciting fighters in the history of the UFC, I think and you're putting them against each other, like it's kind of a can't miss proposition. And I think that's why you put these two against each other for the BMF championship. And I kind of hope that the BMF championship follows this kind of model going forward, where you take fights that you wouldn't necessarily expect to happen, or they don't really make a lot of sense from a meritocracy standpoint, but you know, they're going to be a ton of fun. And I think those are the kind of fights that they should be embracing with this BMF championship. If they're going to keep it up as a thing. The so what do you imagine the fallout will be from this fight and the title picture? Because 155 is very interesting. I just got Saruki and Oliveira on this as well. They'd have, I guess, a claim to to fight. And then you know Poirier's tweeting this week the to Islam that you know I'll see you soon and a lot of momentum after Poirier did what he did to to Benoit Saint Denis that he should get the title shot. All good arguments. If if you were Dana White, what would uh, be your your move uh, to to fight Islam next? Well, personally, I would say whoever wins between Oliveira and Sarukian is like the most, uh, from a merit standpoint, probably the best candidate. Although I think that if, if Sarukian wins, you can make the case him, Gaethje, you know, you're kind of, both, they're kind of both on similar ground, especially if Gaethje ends up beating Max Holloway. So the Dustin fight, I think, is more of a necessity because of the schedule. Like they, they have a, a card in June in Newark. There aren't that many champions available to fight right now. Islam wants to get in there. New York has a big Russian population, so it kind of makes sense from that standpoint. And, and Islam wants to fight again in October in Abu Dhabi, so that schedule kind of aligns there. So I think that the reason why they're looking at Dustin is because that fight is, what, I think eight or nine weeks after this card uh, tomorrow. And now suddenly these guys are going to have to turn around and fight for a championship against the top pound-for-pound -pound guy in the sport. N not ideal. So I think that that's why they're looking to Dustin, um, just from a scheduling standpoint. But in terms of merit, like if Charles Oliveira beats Sarukian, I think he's the guy. Before we get you out of here, and a couple more, uh, listen, you do a fantastic job just professionally watching the the work that you cover in the sport. Fantastic. The rapport you have, the interviews you do. I got to ask you, man, as a guy who does cover the sport, because I'm, uh, you know, I'm usually more into like the heat. Dollars. This is like my playpen. I, I love, you know, this to just not even think about it. Have you noticed how weird MMA Twitter has gotten lately? Like, is it is it just me as a fan just sitting back and being like, what the hell is going on here between the feeds, how everybody is acting. Have you noticed just professionally like a difference in, I would say the last six, seven months of just how MMA social media has gotten? Well, Brendan, if you're noticing it and you're not covering it on a day-to-day -day basis, imagine how I feel. I mean, this it's been turned on its head and it's like, it's wild. I, I don't even know. I just try to just continue to like keep it 100 and do what I do and, and provide the kind of information that people followed me for in the first place and not kind of, I try not to get into, you know, barking matches with people that say just completely ridiculous stuff. Uh, sometimes it's hard, honestly, it's, it's you, you try to bite your tongue, but when people just say things that are so like mind bogglingly dumb, you almost have to like put them in their place and be like, no, you're, you know, you're, this, this is not something that like any human being should think. But, uh, I don't even know. Yeah. Like you said, it's just, Dude, I don't even it's know who's something of a cesspool for sure. I don't even know who's <laughs> real anymore. Like it's, it's wild. Like I will be, tweeting about the Miami Heat and just like, hey, bad shot by Tyler Hero. And then there'll be some, yeah. you know, mention and be like, you have always hated Tyler Hero. And I'll be like, 
this person has zero followers and appears to be a porn bot. Like what, what the hell is going on here anymore? But MMA has just been a fascinating one because it just, I, I don't know. It just, I guess it's all the trash talk that just ramps people up. And I've just wondered if you've noticed that it's been crazy. Well, I just, I just kind of don't get the, the point of the platform anymore. Like the, the platform was great for, in terms of the information, real time information, like the, that yeah. was the place to go. You want credible sources. You want people who, um, you, you can see that they're that they're credible and that they are knowledgeable in their particular area. And now you're like giving anybody can buy a blue check mark, and I, I just don't get the point. Like, what's the mission statement of X now? Like, is it free speech? Like, it was kind of free speech before, as long as you didn't like say stuff that was like just completely reprehensible. Um, so I don't really get what the mandate is. I, I think that the the platform itself has kind of been eroded and is is a shell of what it once was. And I'm hoping that one day it kind of returns to uh, the glory days of just being a great hub for real-time information. Well, you do that, man. Aaron Broadside, go uh, follow him. He's brought to us courtesy of Bet Online. Check Bet Online for the most up-to-date fight lines and props for UFC 300. He does a great job covering mixed martial arts for sports. And I appreciate the time, man. Thanks so much. Thanks, Brendan. Appreciate you. All right, take care.